Welcome into the Camastruck Podcast, episode number 253. Yeah. Fueled by First Form, Cam. Hell yeah, dude. I already crushed two of the mugs, right? About five minutes ago. You ever, you ever eat with somebody that, well, you don't eat any, but if you if you ate, mm-hmm. you, have you ever been to a restaurant, or is your wife like this, where they are very slow, slow eaters? Uh, slow. She's not overly slow, but I will say when I'm, at a, when I'm at a restaurant, I'd rather eat very slow than fast because I like the waiter and waitress, because there's waitresses and waiters, Cam, in case you didn't I know. know like, they're, they're both. I know. You, you want to like... I give How me dare time. You I want to. I want to be in here for the long haul. That's that's what I'm yeah, looking to I, do. I get that, but like I don't my need wa- to be rushed. My wife eats so slow, and I'm like this. We go. I'm like, rawr, 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 rawr. and she's like, oh, let me look at. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this piece off, and then I'm, and I'm gonna set it down. I'm gonna set it down, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my sip of water, and then I'm gonna look back at it. I'm done. Do you know that there is done with like it. a medical condition? Like some people can't eat around other people. Like when they hear the sound of chewing. When they hear the sound of eating, people. Oh yeah, I get. I they get they can't. There's or if certain they see people. You, like I'm telling eat you, with your mouth open, talk with your mouth open. I've uh, you know, when you, when you play with no, so this many is different a no, 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 no. conditions, but when you eat out with so many people, mm-hmm. right? Like with like you're on different teams and shit like that. There's guys, big groups, big groups of people all the time. Like you're always at team dinners. Like some guys gross me the fuck out. Mm-hmm. They gross me out. Or guys are like a, they'd eat it and they would literally scrape. The plate. Yeah. Dude, you can go get extra. There's <laughs> extra food everywhere, like pasta. There's fruit all over the place. But, like, you did scrape the plate like, mm-hmm. and put all the mush at the end of the plate, and they, like, basically lick the plate at mm-hmm. the end. Um, it's like, calm down. Like, when you, like, when people eat, like, a ranch dressing salad, and, like, they're talking, and ranch dressings, yeah. are, I, I can't deal you with it. You know what that. else? I, I can't deal with it. I got so weirded out, and I was going through so many different things anyway, but, like, I hated having a roommate because I, I didn't, I didn't, but when I got sent down to the end of my career, I had to have a roommate again. Mm-hmm. And I love all the guys on that Albany team. They probably but don't I want hate, a room with you either. I'm the easiest roommate ever, you dude. Think? I'm clean. I don't, I don't like, like I'm not gross with, with stuff. Like I'm pretty know. organized. I don't know. What are you talking about? I'm just saying like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Oh yeah. Those young kids didn't want a room with me. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> they want to room with another rookie and get no knowledge and shit like that. Yeah, man. Like I helped those guys out. But I hated having a roommate, and just always being around a bunch of swinging dicks. Love all the uh, love all the guys, but like you're with dudes every second, man. You're shitting in front of them. They're farting in front of you. You're fucking. They're farting in the room. They're on the phone. Like I, I got so sick of it, dude. At the end of it, mm-hmm. just being around. Could you ever be in a uh, uh, what fraternity? When I was. You- no, well, could you do it? Because it sounds like you probably could. I know, like if you try, you're, you're going right to go to a fraternity and they're going to try to haze me. Like, no, I'm not saying that. And that kind of shit. Like, but I'm, what you're talking about is yeah. like with one roommate in a fraternity, you've got like 30 or yeah, 40. Yeah, but basically of them. playing on a team, you're and, on the bus and together. And they're and fucking shit. gross, man. You ever been inside a fraternity house? Uh, yeah, they're yeah. They're gross, dude. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't like that either. But when you're young, you're away from your parents and that's all that matters, mm-hmm. you know? But I just got that, like that. Like, you're eating on the bus, and guys would fart. And it's just like, fucking fuck. Like, God. <laughs> like, like no, like, no like problem it. whatsoever. I, got sick. I just got sick of it, man. Like, you just, mm-hmm. you get older, and then you get sent down, and then you're with, like, young kids again. Mm-hmm. And it's just, like, a different thing, and I just was fucking done with it. But it's mm-hmm. all good, man. Hey, if it's I sound good. a little smarter today, Cam, there's a reason for it. I've been doing uh, brain exercises. Like what? Um, I downloaded an app. I'm really enjoying Chat it. ChatGPT? No, you know what that is? It's, what is that? It's like that new uh, that new uh, computer that's going to take over the world, and we're all going to be irrelevant in the next. It's four called years. elevate. What's that? Elevate. What do you do? Like you just like uh, they give you like a word, and you have like a quite quick like response. You have to like find words that like go along with that word, or maybe the opposite of that word. Like it's like different ways to improve your vocabulary. There's like oh, cool. several different ways where you can tell if somebody. Um, does not have a uh, good sense of the English language or have a strong vocabulary. One way is if they use words like literally all the time. I literally this, I literally that. Okay. If they freeze up in a conversation, they may not have a very good, you know, expansive or vocabulary. Not a good communicator. Well, that's part of it too, but part of not being a good communicator is also maybe not having a good command of the vocabulary. Or you just lack of confidence. So if I sound... 
A lot smarter today. Well, you need to sound smart. It's probably... Because you sound dumb a be, lot no, on these intros. it's probably because of my uh, brain exercises yeah. that I've been doing the last well, couple you of need days. To do, how about you just research things? In fact, my scores have been, like, among the highest. Like, cool. Like, Use big I'm words. Getting, like, People will like scores. you more. <laughs> like, nothing worse than a guy trying... Like, when Mike Tyson came out of jail, remember he was, like, oh, it's ludicrous. I mean, remember Mike Tyson had his fucking monster words out the wall. Like, oh, he yeah. overdid it, oh, right? Yeah. So get to that point. You'll Stephen be cool. Stephen A. Smith tries to overdo it too. He's a smart sometimes. dude, man. He's oh, a he smart is. Guy. Very smart guy. Very, I need, very accomplished writer. Before he, he got in television, you know what I do to enhance my vocabulary, mm-hmm. which is you know it takes time, man. It truly does. You read. You just oh, read. reading is you huge. read, 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 man. Do you know what I used to do? I got my system down for a long, long time. Which any young aspiring uh, broadcasters out there, you want to you want to become a good broadcaster. And I'm not saying you should do what I do because it's probably do the opposite of what I do. But um, one okay. thing: what are you a fucking when, asphalt seal? No, when you're when you're reading, or you read the newspaper, you read it out loud. No, I get that. Listen, reading in general, you mm-hmm. you're still doing it. My dad would get up. Reading and, is knowledge, dude. My dad you know, reads knowledge. history books that mm-hmm. are 1,500 pages long. He'll sit in the back deck and read about Vikings and a story about a Viking and a falcon that they coexist. And, and then, like, but when, he, when I was young, every morning he'd get up, he'd be in the same position. He gets up early. He's got the paper down. He's got his head. He's got his fist on his cheek. He's having his coffee, and he's reading the paper from head to toe. Now, does he agree with everything that's going on in the paper, especially in St. Louis? Hell, hell no. Nah. But it's always cool to know what's going on. And he would just know and understand. So, like, even though, like, when I'm doing a radio show, like, my dad's always up to date on the current events that's going on. He'll so that's me on that's things. who's feeding you information. It's like a lifeline. I feed myself. Is, information. Are you wearing like an earpiece, like a quarterback, like the head coach? It's like, uh, say this, say well, that. Just like, kind of like what Brody does to correct you when you try to correct <laughs> Cam, me, and then Brody has to. The fact checkers are after you every give day. Give me an example. The um, ankle bracelet. Oh, because it didn't. I, listen, it doesn't tell you if you're on drugs or okay. Alcohol. I was wrong on that. Yeah. No, they have a thing that will tell you. I had a listener send me a picture of, yeah, of his ankle bracelet. And he actually put my tires. Up. And he literally Jesus is. Christ. He's telling me that it, it cannot. It, like it cannot. I'll give him. You know, that. my bad. But I was. We're talking about ankle bracelets. Can't think there's like a guy in the command center be like, oh, he just had a drink of alcohol. No, there's, there's things that do do that. His for levels you. are showing. And who, remember who you're talking to. <laughs> I think to. you may be right about. Remember that. who you're talking I think to. You could be right. There like, is something that's out. Yeah, there is. But ankle bracelets are goddamn horrible. Horrible. They're horrible and they stick out like sore thumbs. And a dude posted and he gave us a picture and he's on like a private jet with an ankle bracelet <laughs> on. Really bizarre, man. It's still listen, it's still embarrassing one no, way or the is. other. It's all good. It is. It's all good, man. Yeah, but man, yeah. I want uh, sometimes you just uh you get into some shit, Kim. But it's how you come out of it. Yeah, man. I want all the people to hear me say that. It's not how you get in it, it's how you come out of it. I probably learned that well, on the both. Elevate app. You last gotta know night. why you got into it in the first place. To get out of it. I so, am, no, it coexists, I am Andy. elevated today. I am Andy elevated. couldn't even find a, a, a demon in his whole fucking life. Oh, like, sure. You're I okay. I want to give you a shout out, though, and I want to give Scotty Rupp a shout out from the uh, I do uh, have, amateur. I, ho- everyone has demons. Sometimes. Oh, you, you had to think about this for a while. No, sometimes you don't like to publicly talk about your demons. I don't even know what my demons hey, really are. And it's so. funny how this works, all you guys out there, all you guys busting your ass. Look what I say. I bring everything out, dude. Everything out to a point where I'm like fucking nervous about things, man. Mm-hmm. I get nervous, but I know it's better for the greater good for the podcast to be real, to be honest, and and and, and tell the truth. And he's got to figure out, and he's got to wait for another week to come back out and then and then tell everybody that uh, I'm not. I, he's so important. He's more important than me to where he can't do it, mm. but I can. Why that, is that? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that something? That is. How really do you get something. to that point? How do I get to that point where I I, I can get as, as important as you, so I don't have to talk about it. How do you get there? Lose a little confidence. Okay. You know what I mean? Oh, it's a confidence thing. No, it's just, well, I, think, that you, I think you really have I to. I think I know where you're coming from now. Yeah, now, man. listen, like when you say things. me about it, like, but it's. Oh, are you okay? No, I don't know. Now, now I got to, like, are you okay? <laughs> are we okay? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, we're okay. Oh, man. But now, like, you can't say that because, like. No, because, like, listen, my people. Now will, you're my using people will it. start coming now after you're, you. Oh, yeah, who? All my people. <laughs> when you when you start bullying. Bullying? Oh, yeah. Don't even get me started, boy. All you hockey parents out there, you guys are all crazy, man. You're all crazy. Uh, I was giving you a shout out, and you directed me in a different direction. Oh, go ahead. I want to give you a shout out, and uh, and Scotty Rupp from the uh, St. Louis Ho- uh, Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. You know they did a little thing on my mom uh, passing away, and I really appreciate that. I heard you did a great job. A bunch of good uh, guys. Uh, Bobby Gasoff Jr. got uh, inducted. As you well told as- me you didn't get any feedback. You told me, and I believe you. Oh. And usually when you fuck up. You'd hear Somebody would have told me. Why are you, you know sniffling I mean? today? Oh, man, I'm about to sneeze. Oh, my uh, God. Are you having an allergy attack? Um, yeah. Get this guy some Claritin. Sneeze. 
I'm going to sneeze. My uncle just passed away, by the way. And do you know he was on the team that invented Claritin? On, yeah. the, on the medical team? Yeah, they or, made or it. They, uh, they made Claritin. Oh, he's a... Are you a wealthy dude? That's your uncle? You're going to get that coin? He's on the... Uh, no. I don't really oh. touch that. He's my, my mom's sister's husband. Great guy, though. Okay. Okay. Um, your mom's... Jersey, yeah, that's... Jersey boy. And he's cousins with Jon Stewart, the... Uh, Comedian. Comedian, yeah. Yeah. I like John Stewart, man. I like John Stewart and Bill O'Reilly when they went toe to toe back in the day. Both go from Bill Cooper. O'Reilly got canceled. Well, no shit he did. He was rocking for a bit there. When I was young, I used to watch him. No spin zone. That's when uh there was actual debates. He got a little touchy poo. Can I throw this out there? Yeah. I think the new wave of um television news and media in general, I mean, we're seeing it right now, but like we are witnessing the beginning of the end for network. Uh, news stations oh, shit, like dude. CNN and Fox News. Yeah, we know. Uh, like, 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 no, like Tucker, Tucker doing that Trump interview. Yeah, but you got to understand on his own. You got to understand too. And Trump and Trump and, and Tucker Carlson doing it and, and starting five who, minutes. Who early. financed that? What? Hit. Listen, you Trump, don't think Trump got any money out of that? Tr- he didn't need to get money. I'm the same exposure. Trump. Who, who's paying? Who's t- paying what? Tucker. Tucker's got to be getting. Paid, Twitter's dude. paying Tucker. Twitter's paying Tucker. So he's got to deal with Twitter? Yeah, no, he bought the check mark like I told Brody to do and you. So he's going to get paid for his views. You not understand that? Listen to me. Tucker Carlson, Elon Musk, and Trump are all coexist together in ways. You don't think they all know what the fuck's going on? They're helping each other out? Mm-hmm. No shit. Like they started five like minutes. Back be- channel communication. Yeah, they fucking started five minutes before the Fox News thing. Everybody's watching them. They're not going to stop watching them and go to Fox News. So it fucked their fucking audience over. Tucker Carlson's in cahoots with Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. They're all making money off each other. What do you think, So Andy? you think it's back channel like communication channel? going no, on? No, they're... They're like, we don't need you. You think they're on, We're a, gonna prove you think to they're you. on a group text together? Well, of course. <laughs> We're going to prove to you that no one needs to watch cable news. Right. Now, the only thing is, you can look at the numbers, and Twitter's skewed. You look at these numbers, all these little exp- impressions you get. That doesn't mean you listen to it. 200 million doesn't mean 200 million listen to that thing from fucking for 46 minutes. That was how long it was. It just means you scroll down, and you saw it, and it counts. So Twitter there was like a prominent media member, I think, who tweeted something out about of that course. today. Yeah, like that he's well, that's reached obvious. a certain number of like impressions. It, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. It's skewed. So Twitter, that's why Elon probably f- uh, changed it. So just it looks like you got to explain how a it's, million. How it's I just told you. <laughs> explain again. Hey, listen. Well, I'm elevated, Sometimes. dude. My brain. Yeah, you know, well, how about you read a little bit more? Okay, and learn how to so, listen. So explain because that that's again, what you're though. bad at. Explain. That's your demon. Ooh. You interrupt and you don't listen. No, 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 no. No, I think you, you interrupt me more than I interrupt you. You want to bet on that? How much? Well, let's get let's do a poll. You guys, whenever we we post this next interview, see uh-huh. who interrupts more. Is it Andy or is it myself? Well, now you're not going to do it. No, they're going to do it. They post on and, and they'll yeah, post. Yeah, but now Brody. you're going to stop interrupting me. What? For today's show, you won't. sometimes I have to shut your fucking ass up when you tell a story <laughs> about you in Arizona. <laughs> Selling flowers or something. Here's the deal. Mm -hmm. Those guys are all in cahoots. And if you go on Twitter and you see an impression, that doesn't mean that they listen to the whole video. Mm -hmm. That just means they scrolled down and they saw it. Fox News, during that debate, probably got fucked over at the beginning. And you're not allowed, if if, uh, they had this system down to where they only, you could only post three minute clips of the debate were for Fox News. Fox News implemented that. But over time, all those clips are going to get recycled and recycled and recycled. Sure, so sure. it'll probably add back up. I got you. So you get my drift? No, But I that was you. smart. And you if, hadn't explained all of that yet. Well, oh, I'm trying to. I know. You interrupt yeah, me. Yeah, okay. So anyway, Trump and Elon and Tucker are all, they all coexist. They're mm-hmm. all in cahoots with each other. And it's smart to do that. So there's such a divide. This country, all you Canadians out there, I know you guys are chirping what's going on up there. We all got our problems. It's going to be okay. But there's division in so many different ways. It sucks. This is going to be... Everybody's like, oh, I can't wait for these debates. This is going to be a fucking disaster. All this shit. Trump to Biden to all this stuff is going to be... It's going to fucking be harmful for the country. There's so much division. We, it, wow. It's scary. Cam's starting to finally get it. Get what? You're starting to find... You're, you're coming around. <laughs> She'll be coming Brody around like, the Brody, Brody's like even rolling his eyes at you. <laughs> Like my God, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just being real, and we don't want to get into politics. It's all good. It's all good. Listen, all you guys, everybody in their own country, like it's a worldwide thing. If shit goes down here, shit goes down everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's the way it goes, and it's all good, man. You can't listen. I like to, I like to read everything. I like to know about all kinds of stuff and make my own opinion on shit. But I try not to get pissy about stuff. 
Like I truly do. You can't let, there's, there's sometimes you have no control over this and you have no control over that and you just read negative stuff, negative, negative. Sometimes you got to put your, get yourself away from it mm. and sit back and be like, hey, we still got it pretty fucking good. Yeah, turn the TV okay? off. Again, I told you about the worst years in history. We ain't even fucking close. Shit went down back in the day. Not, not too long ago. Now, there could be a world war and we're fucked, okay? And they're going to draft and you got a little boy... And they want to draft all these fucking kids go over to fight a, a an army against Russia and China and this, that, and the other in Iran. Like, that could go down. That's the scariest thing in my opinion. But you can't be a fucking warrior. I'm worried about everything. And then it affects your family. You got to live your life. You got to do your thing. And whatever happens, Can happens. Can I make we'll a deal suggestion? Yeah. Um, turn the TV off. Try it. Well, do your own homework. No, try it. Try turning the TV if, if off. You're getting all your for news one week. Oh, okay. And, yep. and 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 don't watch TV. Don't read all the news and whatever. And like fill your brain up with all this shit. And try not to, go outside. Go on a hike. Yeah, you could you could go do that. sleep in the woods for a night. Get away from it. You know, take a deep breath. Like honestly, I really mean that, man. Like sometimes it's good just to kind get of get away. away from it. On the weekends, I like to do that. I like to know what's going on. I don't want to have my head in the sand. I like to know what's going on in different parts of the world, especially the United States. I mm -hmm. truly do. What affects the United States? I kind of want to know what's going on. You can't drive yourself crazy with it. It's good to be. A, it's good to educate yourself and have your own opinion. Mm -hmm. You cannot drive yourself crazy. You can't. You got to live your life. You got to take care of your family. You got to find happy things that that build your endorphins. If you're grumpy and angry. All the time because you're watching the news and you're like, fuck everything. I hate this. You're going to, mm -hmm. that's going to come out in your family. Mm -hmm. Your kids aren't going to be running around you. Do you want to uh, talk to you or anything like that? Because you're down, you're down, you're down. Who the hell wants to be around somebody that's always down? See, and you do that to yourself. You give me shit for like going on vacation and stuff like that. Like something you got to get away. Andy, you go on no, vacation. No, you got to get away. I told you, you, you go you, on a different kind of vacation. Yeah, but you, so you go, you're going to go spend 12 grand in Cape Cod. <laughs> I'm like, go here and stay. And you guys will all have a good time. But Andy's got to go because of the Creve Coraca Club nerds are like, we're on vacation. And Andy and Lori are like, we. We got to go. We have to compete with them. That's why I <laughs> yeah, chirp that's you. That's not true. That's why I chirp you. That's you not know? true. We but like to go places true. we've never been before. Dude. We go to, we, we go to really, like, we go to cool places. I know you do. Every I, year. I know you do. Try to find somewhere different. Andy went on five vacations in five weeks. Now, will I say this? I could Cape God. Cod, as, it cool, it affects as, Brody and I. as cool as it was and as much fun as we had. and it's always, a shit ton of money. It's always great. Well, no, it's not just about that. It's always as, as great as it is to be like... To create memories with your family, you know, it's, I probably wouldn't go back. There. I know. I but know you, you live would. and learn, dude, when you go places, <laughs> I think it's a great, listen, here's my take Cape on, Cod. here's my take, we have to get no, to no, Cape no. Cod. Here's my take on Cape Cod. And we it, already talked about no, Cape, no, 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 no one cares, no, dude. No, 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 no. See, this is awesome. where you get, this is where I have to chime in and no, interrupt you, because no one gives a fuck. Look, look, I'm already winning the polls right now because of your interrupting. Oh, no, they're, they're, I, I just went up another percent. Go ahead, man. Talk um, about Cape Cod again. <laughs> okay. The reality Jesus. is, I think it's a great place if you live in New England and, like, you want to get there for the weekend. <laughs> well, you you want to have summers there. You want to get a summer place. <laughs> because everyone, like, I met there, and I would say I'm from St. Louis. They'd be like, oh, my God, what are you doing oh, here? cool. No, no, no. Yeah, well, you know what's cool? I like what Brody does. I like what Brody. Brody knows how to entertain, to entertain him. You're not married yet, are you? No. Him and his lovely girlfriend. Mm -hmm. They go to simple places. They love hiking. They take mm -hmm. the dogs everywhere. They'll go to a cool little place that's not that far away. They could sit and they could camp out and go to a little beach yeah, yeah, and do our thing. Everybody does that. Not everybody. Sure they do. No, but Brody, like, and he just does it and he does his thing. And he makes a spectacle out of going to places. Like, he's like, I'm going to Cape Cod. Like, like, he thinks Cape Cod's like fucking Petra in Jordan. It's pretty Like, nice. he's going in these caves in the fucking Middle East and finding scrolls from the 1100s. You're going to Cape Cod. It's pretty nice. Touristville of all Touristville. And Andy's like, look at what we're doing. The pilgrims were here. The pilgrims. <laughs> I'm seeing lighthouses from the 1800s. <laughs> I like that. Maybe even from dude, the 16th. There's 16th. a lot of history. There's something from the 1600s. 1600s, baby. dude. I'm hanging out with the fishermen, dude, no, on the weren't. docks. Yes, I was. Somebody chimed in. Too. I love it. My, I love you guys, man. Just keep sending me stuff, dude. I love it so much. People are like, keep sending me stuff. People are like, me. Andy's talking about all these wealthy people out there, and he's hanging out with like football coaches and stuff. And then he's like, Cam, I'm so glad that you brought up the fishermen. 
and said, fuck those wealthy motherfuckers that are nerdy and boring. Go talk to the shit kicking real motherfuckers. I told you to do that. No, you didn't. No, you, no, you didn't do that. I did do that. No, you didn't I've do got it. Pictures that must of me have been doing it. that must have been some sort of like he sat down next to you and you you and you guys are probably okay, honey, we have to go. This guy has been working and he doesn't really smell. Yeah. You, oh, oh, no, you no, no, no. I'm just saying. like that. I'm kind of think so. Come on. Dude. Well, I have to be like, hey, man. Fit. Then you're like, well, we did hang out with fishing. Hey, I don't think you did. We went down to the docks, dude. I put some videos up of, some, of, the, of the fishermen, dude, in the lobster boats and like the storms coming in. I, I, I have evidence oh, yeah, of dude, it. Follow my social media. Oh, yeah. Follow me. I mean, please. Why don't you beg them? <laughs> beg them to follow you. But I did put that up. But you were talking about the St. Louis Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame. Yeah. I emceed the actual uh, the event, the yep. ceremony. It was a lot of fun. A lot of people there, man. Great opportunity to catch up with a number of people. A lot of people from the Blues organization were there. And um, it's good to see a lot of folks out there. Yeah. And and to to honor a lot of people that have impacted Hockey here locally. In St. Louis, man. It's been around for a long, long time. Isn't it weird? Like, it's a pretty big city. You get a team in 67, and it takes from having a professional team that had a lot of success off the bat, going to the Stanley Cup Finals three years in a row, having some character guys off the bat, some Hall of Fame guys um, off the bat with this organization. It took how many years? Like, 67, 77, 87, 97. Like 50 years. To, to have a one kid make it out of, the, out of here to play the oh, NHL? No. I, th- I didn't know where you were going with that. I thought you meant to win a Stanley Cup. No, oh, I know. Cam was making it about you? Is that what you're no, doing? No, making it about all. <laughs> I mean, he just turned this whole thing about St. Louis hockey in the 60s, Hall of Famers, how, yeah. and he taught it all about you. You brought it all back to so you. So you admit that I'm the first one? I well, thought you said Pat, no, Pat LaFontaine is. Well, then what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> well, you weren't thinking that. You were How do thinking, you know? Well, probably. you correct me every day, don't you? <laughs> I knew we now were. What? I knew now what are you, you saying? Were going with that. My point is, though, damn, it took a long time. All those guys that you brought up yeah. had a part in every single part of that. Yeah. Like how the, like these AAA teams are dominating now. All those guys, all those older guys that you're bringing mm-hmm. on from – Fuck, even like Perry Turnbull, who played for the Blues and started a roller hockey uh, facility here that, you know, fuck, he's doing pretty damn good. I remember mm-hmm. playing there when I was a kid. A lot of competition. Like, all those guys mm-hmm. had a big part in all these NHLers. Yeah. It first started off with Pat LaFontaine. You tried to turn it on me, and I turned it well, back on you. You better well, sit down today, That boy. wasn't the original you and your plan. Glasses you, you, got on. you adjusted. You better sit down. You adjusted. Adjusted? Yeah. You adjusted. <laughs> You're trying. You, you got to be able to adjust. You're trying. Hey, you know, there were people that have been around since, like, the. who knew that, like, hockey was being played in, like, the 1930s, dude? Yeah, dude. In St. Louis. I, where? And, and everywhere. Where, They though? were playing on black ice. Excuse me? Black ice. Where? Like, on the frozen ponds, dude. For like a half a day, it was written in this guy's like bio. You gotta think though, like in St. Louis, man. I had to ask him what he meant by like, that. What, what do you mean, mean? By black ice? Like to me, black ice is like when on the road, you're, like when your car like skids yeah, out because you just you. don't see it. Yeah, I'm like, what are you what are you talking about? He said, like, no, that's what that's what it was on like the 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 water, whatever river how, pond, whatever. So like, like but though I, I get that, but on the other hand, it's like. In, in St. Louis, you can't rely on playing on outdoor ponds to you know enhance your skill. It's like, oh, my God, it's been cold for five days in a row, under 32. Let's go out there and check the ice. Like, that, like how many times are you skating Hockey's outdoors? been around for so long. Isn't it amazing that it took that long until I got into the NHL? Yeah, <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> I mean, isn't it amazing that hockey was around for so long? And then look well, how long it was until I got into the NHL. If you really think about it, it's been a long time. <laughs> in a major city? That's awesome. I know. It kind of is. Actually, it's not awesome. It should have been guys that probably should have made it a long time ago. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Good thing Pal LaFontaine paved the road. He paved the road for he did, didn't he? a lot of kids. Fuck, he was here seven years. What do you expect? You know? Travis Turnbull was there. I'll give him a shout-out, like too, because he man. listens. Played at Michigan. Yep. Just retired. Had, like, a 15-year pro career. Yeah. He did damn good. Playing in Germany. Played for Buffalo. Scored a, scored a goal against Henrik Lundqvist. Why did he, Why did he go to Europe? After nice, Buffalo, because I thought he was doing pretty good there. He was, but, you know, sometimes... Sometimes you got, yeah. Got, you could probably make more money and the quality of life and... Yeah, because you're playing... A, you could Yeah, I don't know. I like Trav, man. You know, I don't see too many guys that, like, leave 
if they know they're going to have like a long like NHL career. Well, you I know just, what I'm saying? Like, I just so remember him playing for Buffalo. I think if you see yep. like, hey man, it's going to be tough. Like, maybe I'm going to go over there and try it out, and then realize, hey, it's fucking awesome over here. You oh, know, dude, Germany's cool. And you know, once you you know, stay in one place for X number of years, man. You you become like one of them, you know, like you get treated unbelievably well. Yeah. You become well known in that league. We say at Dusseldorf for a while. He bounced around a lot, yeah. but uh well, no, he was with it, yeah, a couple different places, yeah. Yeah, but Germany's cool. It's a clean, cool country with low crime. And don't get me wrong, they done fucked up back in the day a couple times. But Germany would be a cool place to play. Um, you seeing all these uh, panda bears that are getting sent back to China? Oh, God. Anytime you get sent back to China, it's not a good thing. You know they have a very strong bite, like the pressure of their okay, bite. Okay. Yeah, I, I, like it's if, among the strongest. Depending on which of, list you look at. If I had a shit ton of money, I'd like to have a little cute panda bear. I don't think you can have them as a pet. They could fall out of a tree, man. Like literally fall out of a tree. Yeah, like 80 feet in the air and be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and like fall and go, but dang. The other Bears day, can do that too. Dude, I was at the rink the other day and... Uh, a panda bear fell? No, like you know how like like a two-year-old kid like has skates on for the first time or something? Yeah. And it was like a stick and puck. And this kid was literally like, had his knees like, you know, sitting, standing like on his on his shins, on top of the boards, about to fall over the ice. What? <laughs> He's about to fall over the ice. This two-year-old kid, on top of the boards, climbed oh, up oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And was about you to... save him? Saved him. Saved his life. Saved Good his you, life, man. yeah. See, we both did it now. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Oh, yeah. This is probably more horror than me well, diving down and getting that 250 I wish I could get the video in slow motion. I'm looking you, forward to it. Get over here, kid. Get out of my way. No, I was like... And I, like, you know, like that slow Whoa, motion. Oh, yeah. Help, and you just and, like, save him. And he's falling, and You're I, a hero. I catch him before he hits the Can ice. I say something on that note? Yeah. I look at it like this. If you make a heroic, her, her, heroic, heroic, uh, some sort of, some sort of way that you save somebody's life mm-hmm. out of the blue, drop of a hat, and you go do something so fucking crazy to where you put your life and your, 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 your your body on the line, and you save somebody's life, you shouldn't have to pay taxes anymore. I'll give you an example. I, uh, forever? I don't know. Some sort of tax well, some states, uh, they don't have taxes, you know. No, no. Well, yeah, federal, ta- state taxes, yeah, whatever the case yeah, is, yeah. you're still getting taxed right, in many different right, ways. Right, right, And right. so, anyway, like the other day, this uh, pizza driver, this kid, young kid, 19 years old, just delivering pizzas, grinding it on fucking StubHub, doing his thing. He drives past the house. Stub hub. Or whatever. Isn't that where you get, I'm sorry. Like, uh, Grub hub. My oh, bad. Grub, Grub hub. Yeah. Which, oh, God. Kate and I ordered Grub hub out in St. Albans. Uh-huh. It was the most disgusting. F- I do that. We were talking about that last night. I pissed out of my ass for like 24 hours. Yeah, we're not doing that. It, it was like a four hour ordeal. Mm. Oh, because it took forever for that yes. to get there? And it was nasty. What did you order? Oh, God. I don't even know. Five guys or something. Anyway, <laughs> so this guy the other day, he was a pizza driver. Mm hmm. And he's, you know, he's got no money. He's got nothing. He's just grinding it. He drives past the house that's caught on fire. Everybody's staying outside. Like, what do we do? What do we do? This kid goes into that fucking fire and saves three kids and a fucking dog. Really? By himself. Brings them out. All three of them. And so it's like, it, it's it's unbelievable. He stopped, well, a, drop a hat, just went in there and did it. Didn't even think about it. Mm. Now, I'm not saying risk your life like that. Like, that's crazy. But if you do... If you do something like that, man, like you should, you shouldn't pay taxes. No, or he like, sh- or, you should, or he should get concert tickets for life. That would not matter at all. I would, stuff. I would. I say, mean, listen, that is you trying to be pretty amazing. Today. I'm being dead serious. No, but that is pretty amazing. That if you see a house on fire with no training whatsoever, he ran right in there. That dude. your mindset is to stop and to go in there and check it out, what's going on. He probably had no idea who was in there. No idea. He has no but idea. Maybe he was like, oh, I'm going to check this out. And all of a sudden, he heard somebody some peop- screaming. Some, maybe, people, you know? some people have that in them. Like, I have to do something. What, what pizza chain was he working for? Do you no, know? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't want to throw that out there because I have no idea. Mm-hmm. But this kid, but they did, I think, do, Andy, a, uh, like, uh, you know, you know what, what are they called on, online where you could donate? What are they called? Uh, it's yeah. a GoFundMe. GoFundMe. Mm-hmm. I think he got like a million bucks. So he's doing okay. But all these like these guys that save lives here and there, like, I don't know, man. Like, fuck, okay, you you do something like that. Yeah. Although that might that might make people do extra crazy things mm-hmm. because they think that way. Yeah. So and they'll put themselves in danger. Cause you always hear, just like what happened the other day, like uh, these kids are swimming in like Idaho or something, Andy. Mm-hmm. And um 
The dad tried to jump in to save him. Then the mom tr- tried to jump really? in and she died. Oh, my I God. Know. I saw that with that Listen, woman that got out of the car. You know what I'm talking about, That Brody? she was arguing with her husband and the tiger was there. Oh, that. It, yeah, we were talking and, about and that. And then it dragged her out. Then the mother went and chased after her and the that's mother said, died. Do we talk about this on the radio or here? Because that's another point I, I, I want to make. Like, no matter what, like, some sometimes you get into a fight with your wife mm-hmm. and you're so mad at each other, mm-hmm. which is so dumb. Like, like, and really, yeah. if, if I look back at all the times Kate and I fought, it's for the dumbest fucking shit yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. Always alcohol involved. Always something like yeah. that. Of course it is. It's never sober. Mm-hmm. Unless unless I do something that I shouldn't have done on the radio or something where she get pissed at me and I get mad back. Whatever. But it's usually alcohol-induced. But, like, uh, but if you get that mad, like, that, they got into a little fight and she got pissed and she jumped out of the car because she's mad about who knows what. It's probably something stupid. Mm-hmm. And look what happens. Like that's always the case. Eaten when, by when, the tiger. When guys get Just arrested, don't do it in when guys safari. get arrested because I'm driving home right. or I'm doing this because I'm mad at my wife. Mm-hmm. Take a deep breath. Go sit by yourself for a second. Fucking check out your phone. Get away from your fucking mind. Get away from the demons that are on you right now. Get away from your wife. Get away from everybody. Go sit by yourself and fucking calm down. You think that works? Yeah, I do. Really? 100%. Like, if you go sit 100,000%. Because I'll check my brain elevation app to see if there's something you can do. You always come up with nerdy shit. No, is there an an exercise you can maybe do? But you think you you go sit down by yourself, breathe for 10 minutes. Get away from everybody. Get away from everybody. Mm -hmm. Don't start that fight at the party. Don't start a... No, seriously. Don't start the fight before you go drive or you want to leave. I got to leave her, so I'm going to drive my car home. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. I'm gonna get out of the car in a tiger sanctuary. Don't do that. Come on, yeah. that kind of shit. Yeah, but don't, even if you're like in a relationship and you're at a red light, don't don't, don't get out of the car. Don't get out of the car. I'm gonna or oh god, that happened to me and Kate one time. I know she got out of the car after the All Star game. Andy, that's where I punched my fucking screen, my oh. truck. What screen? My screen on my truck. The screen that was cracked. A screen I Is punched. It still it. cracked. Oh, I got it fixed a long time ago, but. It's such a Hoosier thing. I'm driving out of goddamn Enterprise Center. Mm-hmm. It's been a long day. Well, she's driving. It's been a long day. And it was, all, was it All-Star? Was that what it is? Whatever big event. And we're in Hardcoreville mm-hmm. trying to get the fire D fire mm-hmm. and get the fuck out of Dodge. And we get into a fight. And she gets out of the car and starts walking that off. That is so Hoosier. And, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and gangster... Oh, shit. So now you have to get out of the chaser. Oh, my God. (laughs) What are you yelling? Get them. No, I'm not yelling anything. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it like, I got to calm down. Get back in. I'm sorry. Like, you have to. That I, I was I was so mad. What was the cause of the argument? Who knows? We don't do this all the time. Now, I always admit it whenever I, because it affects me, and I Mm -hmm. like to be real to people. Because people out yonder, Andy, they get in these kind of jams, man. There's people that get in stupid jams all the time. Because it's it happens. So anyway, it the like it's something. You know, it's a long day. I'm everywhere. There's things going on. We're doing this. We're doing that. And it's just it all boiled up. And it's so fucking ridiculous. And we're in Hardcoreville driving out of the number one murder rate in in U.S. And she jumps out and walks away while mm-hmm. we're God. And I had to calm the situation down. It finally worked out. We got back home. But you're like you're thinking back on it like how fucking stupid mm-hmm. Hoosier just like you said did you ever that's run, what did Hoosiers you ever run do. away as a kid for like yeah I mean like I went to a point I went okay uh, listen I did a couple times where I, I was <laughs> I thought the, it was the end of the world or something like ah, they hate oh, me yeah. you know I went and hid in a van oh cool they say candy <laughs> on the side no but I used to be nervous when I see these white vans drive by because they always look like kidnapping vans yeah but they're they're mostly like gonna clean your pool. Because I almost shit. got kidnapped a couple of times. I told you like that one time where that guy chased me down by the school and stuff like that. Yeah, he's not kidnapping. But no, like, he wanted to kidnap me. But hey, um, man, there's kidnappers everywhere. But one time, I, my 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 friend, he um, was uh, running away from his house. So I decided to go with him, and we hid in a van. What'd you guys do? <laughs> no, of course you went with him. <laughs> oh, I mean, come on, Andy, with this shit, Cam. It was, it was at, we knew the girl's house. Oh, you're running away. I'm coming with you. We knew the, no, we, we, <laughs> seventh grade, dude. All right, I get you, man. So we knew so the good. girl's house. It was her parents' van. And yeah. when she knew we were in there. And her mom knew we were in there. And they Did were, they like, both come out with and they were like bringing us food and stuff like that. And, uh, that's one of the times I ran away. I, I ran away a couple other times. It's riveting. Where I would like go like sit by a creek and just like skip, skip rocks and stuff like My that. My point <laughs> is, oh, Jesus. My point is, 
Like, you just got to think, you know, like the, sometimes oh, I walk remember, around the neighborhood now. You all know, you guys out there, it's man. It's very dangerous when I walk around my neighborhood yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. All you guys out there, just remember, like, remember how you, when you get into a fight with either your coworker, with either your wife at a party where you're, you might, you're too loud or she does something. Mm -hmm. Just remember how you feel the next day. Just remember how you feel when you wake up the next day and you're like, oh my God, why the mm -hmm. fuck did we do that? Why the fuck did we fight in front of everybody? Mm -hmm. Was it that in big of a front of everybody or whatever? Like, listen, I, Something. I've embarrassed myself mm -hmm. not too much because I'm I'm really cognizant about that and I don't do too much. Mm -hmm. But there's certain instances where I I did, and, and and I look back on it where Kate and I get into a fight and it's like fuck or Kate Cam and and the next day you wake up and you're like oh why why girl and I give her a hug like why did we do that like oh god and you, it's like you think about it. So my point is man it's just you, you got to take a breath. You got to take a breath. Get away from the scene. Walk away. Go fucking smoke a doobie. Go smoke a dart. Go fucking do whatever. Get the fuck away from everybody. Go go breathe and and regroup and then come back and, mm. and take your girl aside and give her a hug. You can punch a pillow sometimes. No, you, too. no, no people you are going to think some that, of that. I know, but people are going to think that you're aside. Go breathe and then find your girl. It's what I do. Uh -huh. I'll get away. I'll regroup. And I'll come back and I'll wait till no one's looking. I'll grab Kate and I'll be like, come here, you. Come here, I'll take your side. Nobody's look. looking. Where is this? Well, at a, like a house party or at somewhere. Oh, don't, stop Kate, fighting there. No, Andy, I'm, Do it I'm, at home. Yeah, but you can't help it. It's my point. Like, sometimes shit goes down. I'll find her and I'll go, come here, girl. And I love you and I'll kiss her neck. And I'll be like, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. She's like, don't do that again. I'm like, I know, I know, I love you. Let's go back in there. We're good. What's the, Let's go do what do thing. you do that she gets mad at? It could like be. when you're in I'm, public. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. Um, uh, uh, well. You most of the time, I'm like I'm giving maybe somebody too much attention or, or something. A or just female, maybe like a girl's talking. And I'm just like, ah, da, 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 da. like I'm not flirting, mm -hmm. but maybe you're, you're giving a lot of attention, and it's been a long day. You've been drinking all day, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, a cute girl's like that. That's maybe like a wife or something. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It just triggers something, right? Mm -hmm. It triggers something, and and all of a sudden you're drinking, and you, you didn't eat much, and See, whatever the case, my is, it doesn't wife. matter sometimes just like gets in these conversations like we just walked in the door like can we at least get into she's, the actual event butterfly. or where we're going and, and but it forces you to like now engage in conversation like there's people you needed to go say hello to or then you go wanna, say hi or you want to go say hi what, you gotta wait though I if she's know. talking to people well then you get stuck in a conversation yeah, but, and I, oh god andy my point is <laughs> good god my point is your girl's a social butterfly mine's not if i go to somewhere and all of a sudden, people drag in different directions. Sometimes I'll, 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 I'll for, back in the day, I forget. Like, there's Kate. Like, she's not, she doesn't know anybody. Forget what? That, that she's, she's there? here. She doesn't know anybody. I know everybody. You, she can't, know. you can't do that. Can't do that to her. No, no doubt. You can't do it yeah. to her. Your wife probably does that to you everywhere. And you're like, I don't know what to do. Laurie, I can't. It's the opposite with me. Like, Kate, like, I, Sometimes I'd, I'd leave her, and she's like, why are you leaving me? Like, I don't know anybody. You help me. Like, stuff like that. We're like, both social butterflies, but, like, you know, Maybe it's uh, she's we're walking to like to an event or something, and, and she sees somebody she knows that I may not know, and I want to go see people that I want. You know, like whatever. a tall, handsome guy. It's first, I always tell her before. That's Jack. I always tell her, no, that doesn't happen. But I always tell her before him. we get there. I'm like, let's just let's go get a cocktail. Yeah, let's go to cocktail. Let's go, let's go get, get a, a cocktail. Yes, I get that. Then 100%. if you want to go, whatever you got to do, you know. Yeah, but that's good that Lori. Lori can go, go oh, yeah. talk to anybody. Oh, 100%. I don't Lori have to, I don't walk have to in, worry about that Your shit. wife could walk in any group yes. and be like, hi, I'm Lori. Kate doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a complete opposite. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So that could be annoying at times, and this could be annoying at times. Correct. But I'd, yes. I, I'm not going to say I would rather have one or the other. I know. I don't but know. But I do like the fact that I don't have to. Uh, <laughs> Brody been easy. fucking blowing coke can all I, goddamn weekend, boy. Some, you guys Let me see your nostril. Look at me. Look at me, son. Claritin. Jeez. What are you doing over there? You all good, Brody? Do I need to talk to you? God hey. damn. Guys I'm sniffling too. I'm like the health, I didn't do any blow. I'm by far the healthiest person here. No, Brody is. No, he's not. Dude, I'm the healthiest person here, bro. I don't get sick. I'm not sneezing. I eat clean. I'm do very I ever healthy. get sick? Do What's I it? ever get sick? So sometimes you do. Go ahead. Hell no. Nah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do. And I party harder than all you guys. Times a million. Well, then I'm and healthier. Good. And I'm healthier than you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't get sick either. Okay. Don't tell me I get sick all the time. When's the last time I missed anything being sick? Don't say Nothing. that because that's what happens. Well, then I will. I'll get a little vacation. A little vacate time, man. You know, vacation is very important. You got to have that reset. 
I just want everybody to know, like, um, just I think everybody with social media and whatnot, they compare their lives to everybody else. And I'm just telling you, everything you see, every oh, they're so happy. They do. There's always something. Everybody Not, know. Everybody I, knows that. I think everybody knows that. I think people need to be reminded. I, I truly do. Yeah. Well, you some know, people. Who are you kidding, Andy? Andy walks into a party and he compares. I we need this. Let's go here. Let's, we have to buy that. We have to do this. We, I'm talking to you. Talking to you. There is, I think people do have the tendency to saying. assume they All know guys, everything about other people. You don't. Based on social media, and, and we know you don't. No one's perfect. Everybody has their own weird demons. If you and your wife think that, oh my God, we're so fucked. We're fucked compared to everybody. No, you're not. No, you're not. Your neighbor that you think perfect, you don't even know what the fuck's going on over there. Oh, I kind of have just, an idea what's yeah, going on Yeah, they're doing nerdy there. shit in your neighborhood. <laughs> my point is, man, just don't. Don't be down and out. I tell you this, though. I have been, been getting a lot of just messages, man. Like, sometimes, like, I'll get a message. A guy will be like, hey, I, God, this is bugging me, Cam. I'm do, I, I got caught up in this. I'm like, you're all right. I'm like, fuck, you're okay. You're okay, dude. You're fine. But the other day, I got one. I'm sitting down, Andy. And I'm like, what's up, buddy? I'm like, hey. He's like, Cam, I, I'm fucked up. I relapsed. I don't know. what. Ha-. I go, what happened? And I'm thinking, oh, I took this. And I did this last night. And I couldn't. He told me, and I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay. He's like, Cam, I got three kids. I'm jammed up. I go, what are you taking? He's like, this times this, this times that, and this times that. I go, Whew. okay. I didn't say that in the fucking message. I go, here's my WhatsApp. Give me a call. I really talked to this cat. I'm like, okay. You know. Yeah. It ain't- well, that's good that you do that. I, I know. Because people need that. I was I was watching this Florida Gators uh Documentary on uh, do we on, talk about on this? Netflix? No, but we have not. Swamp Kings. Swamp Kings. Yeah. Um, haven't finished the whole thing. I actually like puts it's me to sleep. Urban Meyer, as much as I love it, it just puts me to sleep. It's an but Urban Meyer pump he, up he, video. He was addicted to uh, Ambien. Yeah, you'll be all right with that. That's and, easy. And to he would of. he would drink drink on it a yeah, little bit. I used to do that. So I used to take Ambien, and we used to have Ambien parties where you take it and you you, you don't sleep. So if you take Ambien and try to sleep, it'll knock you out for three hours, and then it'll wear off, and you might wake up in the middle of the night. Doesn't it put you to sleep? Isn't it puts that you the sleep point of it? It puts you to sleep. It doesn't keep you asleep. So it puts you to sleep for a couple hours, and then you, it, it, maybe you'll sleep through it, but maybe not. But what I did and what a lot of people do is if you take it and you stay awake on purpose, then you get done fucked up, and you do weird things. You feel crazy. It's like tripping acid. You'll take it, you'll stay up, and all of a sudden you'll wake up and your fridge's tipped over. You're eating fucking jello and crackers together. You're doing this, you're doing that, and you got a cut over your eye. You black out, literally black out on Ambien. From Ambien. Yes, it's a very dangerous thing. Now, is it that addicting compared to other shit? Not really, dude. You're going to be okay. If you get off of Ambien, you might feel goofy a couple nights and you might not sleep good, but you're not going to go through the depths of hell like you would with opioids or alcohol or meth or whatnot. But Ambien's dangerous. You could take that thing, man, and you stay up, and you're like, I'm going to go do something now because I'm crazy, and you're so fucked up, you can't drive, you can't do anything, and get jammed up. Let me tell you this. I bet you in professional sports, everyone always focuses on the painkillers and whatever, and which is a uh, an obvious issue, and so many athletes, current and past athletes, have, all, have come out and talked about their experience with that. I, I bet you the Ambien is just flowing more than just as much as these pain pills. I think and they're pretty good about it now. I don't think they're handing out Ambien like Skittles anymore. But no, again, but they Ambien's were not, for quite some time. It, it's man. not an opioid. And though, if kids, so. if kids are, are, are if players or whatever, if they're having yeah. trouble sleeping or they need, listen, I, I think you can go get your hand out and still probably get an take Ambien. melatonin or something like that. It, it, you could, there's, there's different things you could take for sleeping. If I'm going to gauge on the hardcore spectrum of where Ambien would be to where I'd be worried about if somebody was taking it, it'd be way down low. That's all. It's still not good, but it's not so addicting to where you're going to steal from your grandmother and you're going to shake for four days and piss out of your ass and be a fucking zombie. It's not It's not that like that. You know what I mean? So you're going to be okay. There, what do you mean? Like you don't feel like that dependency to have no, to have No, it? you do because you, you can't sleep. You, you'll get addicted so you, you can't initially fall asleep without it. But like you're not going to wake up like, uh, shaking like uh, 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 like I hate like, like there's Dude, a huge I, difference. I, I know people that are just they're all about medicine and pills and they they, they gotta take people. sleeping pills and they gotta take cough pills and cold pills and f- flu pills oh, yeah. they're just constantly medicating themselves dude. yeah I know I'm not a big medicine guy 
Like, unless I really, unless I'm really sick, yeah. you, you will not see me taking medication. Yeah, no, I know. You shouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I, I don't think pharmaceuticals are good for you anyway. Hey, we're trying to just let everybody know, man. And, you know, everybody goes through shit. We're all going through a shit sandwich in our own kind of way. Some are better than others, mm -hmm. but we all have something. I was, we all have something. I, I was trying to tell you about the panda bear anyway, because they're sending the yeah. panda back to China. China? <laughs> Do you know that? They have among the strongest bites, dude. I didn't know that. The pressure is like top five. Riveting. Who do you think? No that, one cares about a panda bear's think, bite. What animal do you think has a strongest bite? Crocodile, a hyena, a shark. Hyena's top 10. Shark, crocodile, Shark hyena. is probably top five. I think shark's number one. No. I would say a tiger bites I up I bet there. you a crocodile. No, tigers are among the top 10 toughest Where's animals. Where's our guy at with the new mic that he could actually talk into a mic and figure out this fact check? The top five bites are going to have... A shark, crocodile will be number one. I think a hyena's up there too. Maybe a hippo. Just so you oh, know. Oh, a hippo's up there. Hundred so percent. You know. So is a jaguar. Okay, jag could because they carry their prey up up trees. I know dude. they do. Shit kickers, Lions, right there. Obviously, shit kickers. Grizzly bears. They got um, a hard bite too. You know. Yeah, I know. So I know. We all know this, Andy. Yeah. But like, what else did you read over the weekend? <laughs> it wasn't in my elevated app. You know. My God, I want fall to come around so bad. I don't know where you guys all live, but here in Missouri, fall, it, it just puts me in a good mood. Oh, do you know the weather the smell impacts of the your air. moods? Thanks for yeah. The smell of the air, <laughs> the leaves changing, the leaves falling in the wind. There's no humidity. It's 55 degrees out. You got a jacket on. Mm -hmm. The bugs are gone. The snakes are curling up and getting away. You can go on hikes with your kids and not worry about those copperheads cruising around. The, the brown recluses go and they fucking dwindle out in your house. Like, everything slows down. The weather is beautiful. I love the creepiness of Halloween. I love thinking about Halloween stuff. I love ghosts and shit like that. I love it. I love the middle of Missouri and these old houses and farmhouses on beautiful acreage. Like, it just reminds me of that. I love it so much. I'm off man. this year on Halloween, actually. So, I'm probably having cool. a Halloween. Cool, go trick-or-treating. I'm then. probably having a Halloween party. That'd be badass. <laughs> A bunch of kids running. You know, around. I'm I wouldn't listen to it. Andy. I trip you on that. Like, if you had a Halloween party and you had kids over, I'd come hang out, and I I wouldn't even hang out with the adults. I'd probably hang out with Ty and all his buddies. Fine, no problem. And shooting, sh be shooting pucks in the basement. We are playing video games with. We them. are talking That's what I do. about having a party. Like I've been, I've been. I'll go, man. Because because my daughter's turning thirteen in January. Yeah, I'm, I don't want to go to like a thirteen <laughs> like that. Like, like listen, no, I I'm gonna make it for like adults and kids. I'm gonna have heated tents. I'm going to have a big... We're staying in a tent? No, like big old tents. Oh, like a... Yeah, yeah. With like bartenders and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. DJ, dance floor. Yeah, get it catered and stuff. Because yeah. I'm not eating your food. So you got to get it What do you mean? You're going to have veggie plates everywhere? Uh, maybe. What I'm are you going to have? Gonna have? I have a lot of different What are you going to have? A Onions? lot of different things. The beginning of the end of network news, Cam. I told you that earlier in the no, show. No, I've known that for a long time, brother. Shouldn't say that. My bad. Shouldn't say brother. But I've known that for a long time. You didn't know that. I don't watch news. I've never heard you say that. Brother? No, I've never heard you say that this was the beginning of the end. I've never been one to, like, lock in on, like, one network over the other and, like, well, this... this well, they're feeding what, you the same bullshit. Well, what they say is gospel. No, man, do your own homework on this stuff. This network is the truth, and this network is fake news. Podcasts are where it's at, dude. Yeah. They're a freelance. Essentially... They have no agenda. They have their own agenda. They don't have... Corporate telling them what to say and feeding, feeding information. They're robots. Can anybody... Podcasts aren't. Can anybody do what Tucker Carlson did on Twitter? Or is yeah. there some type of permission you would need to, to have... To do a long form. To be able to have that no. long form. No, you... It, Twitter's changed now. You could put a, an hour-long video up. Okay, cause, yeah, because it's not live. What he did with Trump was not live. You can go live, too. But I... Yeah, can you? Twitter live? Yeah. Like Instagram live? Yeah. But Twitter, you can only go for two and a half minutes... Uh, uh, like a year ago, now you can go on forever. Mm -hmm. So long format, you know. <clears throat> Tucker and Elon and Trump, man, they all got something going together. They're separated from this mainstream media stuff, and it's good. It's healthy. Mm -hmm. No one gives a fuck about mainstream media. They love podcasts because we're real as fuck. Yeah, you think not every pod, think, not every podcast no, is they're, real? They're, too. No, no, no. I know, but you, you know can't. You but if you're gonna do a podcast, that's why people mm -hmm. want to hear podcasts so you can talk about their. Fucking I, I addiction I just, or whatever. I just think um, podcasts can, if done properly, or you know, if this is what you want to do, like you, it, it provides a platform to, to be real. You is know, that what why, I'm saying? is that why Lori and Kate gonna do it? I'm looking for them wow. to I mean, 
kick what, off what would, their first episode. What would their first, probably ep- within the what would their first episode weeks. be about? You well, think? the season's around the corner, so they'll probably break They're down, break the break down some would, rosters. No, seriously, I'm curious. Yeah. What would they? What do you think the first episode would be with those two? Well, you just never know because, like, I tell I, I so tell people things. all the time, and for all y'all listening out there, all my people in Saskatchewan and PEI, man, from coast to coast. Manitoba. Um, we don't shout out Manitoba enough. So, Manitoba, I mean, everybody. Give me a little shout Ontario, out. Ontario. Shit-kicking motherfuckers, Alberta, baby. Alberta Love beef, all y'all. Calgary. Hey, listen, I, everybody, man, they all know. You love that Alberta beef, don't you? Oh, yeah. You eat it all the time. Sure. Oh, I'll it make makes you, you sick to your stomach thinking about it, I'll it? make you a steak. That's like Andy's night. Andy's nightmares are like, God, what if I had to eat that fucking tomahawk steak at Chrissy Pondoff and Cam and First Form Nick and everybody there? Did you look at that steak and you're probably like, okay, calm down, Andy. There's veggies over there. Just, just, just act like you got one and and then go right for the veggies. <laughs> was it tough on you? <laughs> did it look? Like, did it look tough? Kind of. Really? Yeah, I know. I felt bad. I was like, I, I pushed it away from Dude, you a little bit. I, had, I was, I was, it was great. You yeah. didn't need it. I had a bunch of shit. They had a how, lot how of was options. It, how was the tomahawk? Was it good? I, I didn't try the tomahawk. That's what I thought. The eighty dollar tomahawk. Ooh, no, I'm gonna pass that one up. I've got some of those in my freezer right now, though. What a waste. What a waste, man. Andy's freezing tomahawk steaks, and he's going to slow cook it on the Traeger. Oh, gross. Well, I haven't been able to use my Traeger. It's been so damn hot. I yeah, ha- not anymore. I it's haven't, nice now. Oh, it's so nice this week. It was week. nasty, guys. It's nice there. this week. Don't get used to it. No, it's going to be 95 again. It'll be We're going to get shit on again. again. You know. But then Missouri has beautiful falls, dude. Beautiful Yeah, they're short, falls. but, you know. I mean, they could be long. Actually, Sometimes the fall now will, like, extend into, like, December. It's supposed to be El Nino. This, uh, this year? Yes. Now, what does that really mean? Uh, just a different... It's just a, the, the way the, the weather the system. pattern... Just the way the weather pattern goes. Sometimes mm-hmm. you get a little bit lower trough to where it creates more cold fronts hitting the warm fronts which creates tornadoes and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I do think that we're going to get rocked by a couple of hurricanes this hurricane season. And meaning we, meaning the United States, Florida. Florida just got rocked. Rock, was it last year? Was it last year? Uh, two years ago. Two years ago, they yeah. got motherfucked. Yes, they did. They're going to get rocked again. Uh, well, they're still California. dealing with insurance issues out there right now. Well, the insurance companies. I was talking to a politician they, about that the other day. These insurance companies don't want to fund and insure Correct. all these million-dollar mansions down in Florida anymore. There are they're bumping it up so much. Whose responsibility is to go recover money from the insurance companies. and th- th- Those individuals are getting paid a lot of money right now, too. Yeah, but. My point is, like, they don't want to cover these houses anymore because mm-hmm. they're getting rocked. Well, would you if you're an insurance Hell company? Hell no. You'd have to pay a ton of money. Mm-hmm. I know. And this whole Maui thing with these fires, it's the most incompetent government reaction to a catastrophe mm-hmm. I've ever seen in my fucking life. Really? The incompetence that happened mm-hmm. with everybody involved yeah. is weird. It's not, not like, fuck you, no, it's... Bizarre. Even though the fire chief is also homeless it's and stuff like that. Bizarre. Mm-hmm. The whole thing that went down. Are There's you buying so, like conspiracies and shit? Um, not yet. But right now, they the the way the power lines were, the way the trees were overgrown over that's the wealthiest fucking place you could be. You have taxes out the ass. I know. What is going on? The water, with the police, the fire, the response. Whoa, scary. And bizarre. Mm-hmm. Do your research on this. I know. I lived it's there. I, I, I lived there for several months years ago. It's a very, very special place to my, uh, to me. And, and I actually have a good friend of mine from high school who actually. The only thing I'd say. Who is there, yeah. who is safe and then didn't okay. have any. Really? Uh, yeah. He's, 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 un- he see it? He's an incredible. Uh, Randy Schaefer, man. I'll give him a shout out. Yeah. All right, un- Randy. What's un- up? Unbelievable glass blower, man. Very successful glass blower down there. Okay. Uh, does a lot of different artwork and shit like that, is he, man. So is his he's, family okay? Yeah. Well, he said he's okay. He's did checked he checked in safe on did, uh, what, Facebook. What did he say? Did he? Can he? Can he see it? Was he like oh, on a yeah, hilltop? Oh well, yeah, dude. If you're on the island, you can see it, man. It's so what did he say? Big. Was he like this is fucking chaos? I haven't, I haven't spoken to him just through like Facebook. Oh, okay. And shit. Fucking get a hold of him. Talk yeah. to him. Yeah. If you know him, yeah. Call him, dude. Get a hold of him. See what's up. Yeah. See if he's okay, man. It's fucked you up. You want to have him on? Well, I don't think our audience would appreciate that. Like, listen, all you guys, just so, just so you know, Andy and I, like, it, especially Andy, and I chirp Andy a lot, but, like, it's tough getting guests every fucking week. But we do have a lot of people that want to come on and tell their story. But it, has, it doesn't happen. But, like, I, I, we, we think about you guys. Like you want you want the hockey guys. You want us to bring the heat at the intro and outro and shit like that. We 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 know our rhythm, but we do turn down a lot of 
people that mm-hmm. we don't think would entertain you. Mm-hmm. That's all. Yeah. And 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 I just want you to know that, like I we know. don't, because I'm not doing that to them. I they don't know. want to hear about a guy depressed. I'm sorry. And do you, ever, do you ever feel show. like a jerk for that? Like no, like when somebody says business. you should have so and so. No, because I no, you I should th- have my dad on. No, because I th- look, I think of the fans. <laughs> I care about the fans. Right. Okay. There right. are fucking people, dude. I know. They keep this goddamn thing going. Mm-hmm. They support our sponsors. They listen to us. We got to cater to them, no matter what. Whatever they tell us, we got to listen to. They don't want us talking fucking Maui fires. Like, I, that's a radio show thing. We could talk about it this way, but no, man. We got to bring the heat for them. Now, there might be a fucking musician that wants to come on that we could talk about kinds of... I think you guys would appreciate that. But if we do it because of, of a favor for somebody, that's not fair to them. And I ain't doing that. Is that cool? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. All right. Um, Gar Snow is one of those guys. I, I think he, he came... Like, I think yeah. he had an idea that he had, like, a lot of... Like kind of kept in, uh, maybe pent up like stuff that he wanted to get off his yeah. chest. And I think he got a lot of stuff off. The one question I forgot to ask him was about Jared Spurgeon, why they didn't sign him. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Kinda, you know, oh, whatever. You did, but this was an Andy. But, Andy you did a good but job. It, it is you what it is. Job. But like, I think also now after time, I think you know, if you're in his situation and you got to wait X number of years, yeah. maybe you've been dragged through the mud, people blaming you, pointing fingers at you, and you haven't been in position to be able to say anything because you're technically still under contract with an organization and you can't jeopardize getting paid or whatever else, you know, your situation is. But then I think by the time comes when you can talk and you realize, wow, you know, maybe I can get back into the league. You know, maybe it's probably in my best interest to not like go too crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody wants to rehire an individual who, all burn of a sudden, it's spouting the off town down. and going nuts and yeah. like, hey, you know, like, what if something doesn't go your way? That's like for anybody out there. I like, wouldn't like hire how, I, Like, how you act if things don't go your way? You know, well, you still got to tell the truth, too. How do you react? Oh, a thousand percent. And you know what? If you're discontent with your life and you're, you're, you're fine financially and you don't want to get back into the league or you don't want to go work for another team, or do, then absolutely, man, say whatever you want. But I think sometimes... Um, and, and this is kind of an example. I think as as open as Gar Snow is in this conversation, I think he probably could have even gone further. But I think he realizes, you know what? Hey, it's probably best to like set the set the bar like yeah. here and not 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 cross it. You know, hey, here's the line. I Don't cross it. the line because yeah. I, I do want to get back into the NHL. No, no doubt. You know? <clears throat> you know, you see these guys like uh, when they get fired, they tear everything down like. Unless you own your own business and you want to start your own thing going, mm-hmm. like you gotta, like, you know, and, and, and it doesn't. It, if you tell the truth and you do it the right way, it works. But if you're just fuck, day, everybody sucks. At, no, no, they don't. Not everybody. You ever meet a guy that never compliments anybody? They're out there. Mm-hmm. They never compliment. Any, he sucks. He sucks. He. Oh yeah, he, they all suck. Eh? Mm-hmm. Everybody sucks. Nobody, nobody's oh, good. Mr. Negative. Nobody's good. Oh, he's terrible. He's making $6 million a year. What do you, what do you mean? He sucks? Mm-hmm. No. You might not like him, but he's got something he does well. I don't like hanging. I don't like, I, I can't deal with people. And you see that in radio and sometimes in the media. And everybody's terrible or just cocky people. Like, no one's good. No, man. No, they are in their own way. Mm-hmm. They might not be your style, but you have to appreciate what they're doing. Yeah. Whether it's Logan Paul, Jake Paul, Skip Bayless to this to that the other, like you still have to understand there's something they're doing well. Skip Bayless, don't be that fucking guy. Skip Bayless, he, he, I hate him. He had I can't stand a guy. Do you? I don't, I don't hate him. I, I, don't, I, I don't even. I care. don't hate too I've, many people. I've never really like paid much attention to him, like to where I have that strong of an opinion on him. He knows like, what he to is do. in my industry, man. He's found a way to make a shit ton of money, be Tons. very successful. Yep. And I'm envious of that side of it he's doing something you know what i mean you're damn right so like he finds a way to get under your skin but he did a a he did like a round table today i saw it on social media where he had richard sherman uh keisha and lil wayne keishawn johnson i thought he got fired and michael urban they're on the other network on fox i can't keep i don't watch any of that bullshit and dude he brought these three guys on and skip couldn't get a word in it was hilarious dude he couldn't talk these these guys wouldn't stop talking there's a difference and i'll give you an example like um our podcast, we don't have viewers. We mm-hmm. have followers. Mm-hmm. They listen to us. Listeners. We don't just, we're stuck. You just have to, you're, we're forcing you to watch because uh, every hotel and every restaurant puts ESPN on their TVs. Mm-hmm. And no one watches it. No one cares, but it's on. So it counts as a view. That's a viewer. Mm-hmm. We have people that listen to every single thing we say. 
and they correct us and they pump our tires up and they do this and they do that. There's a difference. You get my drift? What do you think of the people who would say, I don't listen to podcasts? Um, I wouldn't well, know how to find your podcast with then, a roadmap. Okay, then what are you watching? <laughs> what are you watching? Right. CNN. Right. What are you watching? Cable news. Oh, cool. You're getting fucking corporate bullshit. Mm-hmm. You listen to pods. These guys are, you got historians. You got all, everything's on a podcast now, whether it's YouTube, whether what we got going, whether whatever it is. Like you'll have people that are sitting there and they're going to fact check everything. They, ha- they don't have an agenda. They're speaking from the heart. Mm-hmm. And there's such a difference in that. So if you're not watching or listening to podcasts, you're not getting the right info, yeah. oh boy. You're not. What did you think of Austin Matthews' contract? Good for him, man. 13 and a half, okay. I will say this, man. Know. You we, score 60 goals, you're a Hart Trophy winner. Like, what do you do? And you only get a $2 million raise. Are, not even a $2 million raise. Well, how much more do you want to give him? I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, people were tossing out, like, $15 million, you know, oh, Fucking cripple whatever. your team? I, I hear you. But the cap's going to be going up, though, Cam. Okay. Like, it's going to be going up significantly. He's not making that so money why he this year. He's still at 11 and a half. That's a good question. Like, I wonder if it's, you know, because this was the only way that maybe they could come together on the term. You know, apparently, you know, there's word that he wanted a three-year contract and the team wanted to give him a five-year contract, so they met in the middle and got a four-year contract. Good for Brad Tree Living. Um, you got, uh, you know, William Nylander, whose contract needs to, needs to, he needs to get re-signed, Marner and all these guys. And maybe this is a way for, you know, Austin Matthews to say, hey, listen, I want to make sure you, I'm leaving enough money or whatever you got. You need to go out okay. and get these guys well, signed and keep my boys resigned too. So you if know, that's the case, in fucking right. Well, Austin. it's got to be somewhere in there. Because so you thought you were going to get fifteen? I think it's a great deal for the Maple Leafs, man. I yeah, think it's a so great, do I. and I think it's a great deal for Austin Matthews. But I do think he was in position to probably even go for even higher. If this guy would have walked into free agency next off season, you know, because he, he scores forty in his sleep. You know, he's already scored 60. He's a great player. I think I don't think anybody can, get, can deny that. He, hey, man. he probably gets more than what he got in free agency. And I think most of us can probably agree with that. And and, and good for t- Toronto, too, in Canada yeah. as a whole. Like, you got a superstar Canada yeah. besides McDavid and whatnot. Yeah. And he stayed for less money mm-hmm. in that market. Good for you. In a way, it's less money. It, like, yeah, he would you know have made more money. Could you dreams. imagine if, like, Austin, when uh, Connor McDavid's deal is up, he just signs for, like, $14 million. Like, takes a $2 million raise. Like, I, I just don't see that happening. Usually, when you get a, you know, your Hart Trophy winner, you score 60, you're getting probably a, a, a larger increase in pay than what Austin Matthews ended up getting. Listen, it's a shit ton of money. He's the highest paid player in the NHL. He's doing fine. He, this guy's going to be in position at the age of 31 to go out and get another eight-year contract, whatever. He's going to make... He's doing smart. More, he is getting yeah. these short-term deals. I know. But it's easier to take short-term deals when your AAV is that high. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you're, if you're AAV, if you're in that four to six million dollar range, right. man, you got to take that, that, that max deal if you get it. Brody, can I get a beer from you? And get that security... Thanks, buddy. But all I'm saying is I, th- I thought he would get higher. I think it's a tremendous deal okay. for the Maple Thanks, Leafs, for the team. And if I'm a fan of the Maple Leafs, I would be absolutely ecstatic with this contract. Yank. Yeah, good for them, man. And you know what? All this talk about people not wanting to play in Canada and these superstars not wanting to sign in Canada. Well, your biggest superstar, one of your biggest superstars in Canada, mm-hmm. just signed for less to play for the, for the team. American kid, too. So you know. Yeah. For you, man. And I, and I listen, I even have a hard time saying he's signed for less because he's the highest paid player in the game. But still, you know what I'm uh, saying? Uh, no, I know, but he's one of the most popular players in the league too. He could have, he could have, he could have got, he could have got more money. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much more? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure he's making. He I'm sure he's making a lot of money off the he's ice too, okay. up in Toronto, man. He's doing okay. Good. I, I like him, man. I, I like him. And, and if I him. was an athlete in Toronto, I would be telling my agent get me as many endorsement deals as possible. Oh yeah. Drive I, wherever get you get me to do. twenty plus million dollars. Fuck per yeah! Year. Find a way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. I get it, but the more endorsements you have, the more of a pain in the ass your life is. Just I so understand, you know. but you can get uh, a lot uh, of shit out of the way in the off season, man. Uh, I, I know. Shoot your commercials uh, and embrace they, it and enjoy they it. They want man. you to do a lot of things. I get it. It's a lot. I get and it. And you're already doing a lot of things anyway. So mm-hmm. I don't know. There's a balance to it. You know what I mean? Do you want to sacrifice your time, your precious mm-hmm. time? Mm-hmm. To make a little bit more money because this guy needs you to go be a clown for mm-hmm. four hours when you got a game the next day. I don't know. I still think Toronto loses in the first round of the playoffs. I, I mean, I'm not going to go well, there yeah. yet. Oh, <laughs> fucking clip that off, baby. Let's go. I, mean, I know. I don't get they like, It's all will. good. I don't want to make it piss at us, but it's all good, man. You know, I always I laugh you. at the NHL. I mean, like, listen, it's like, uh, 
We'll see what happens with a guy like Paul Stastny, but he's had a great year, like a super smart player, you know. Like I don't, I don't even know if he can get a contract right now, but like Ryan Reeves can get a three three retired. year deal. You know? He, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like I thought he just retired. He has not officially retired, dude. Then what the fuck? There were some. I fucking gave him. A, I gave him a shout on the radio. No, he did. Really? Do you know that? Now, now he may end up retiring because he is very selective. In fact, he's moving back here to St. Louis. Cool. This is where he's going to settle. Let's down. Get him on. Oh, we'll get him on, but he wants to wait until he officially it's retires. Fine. We need him live. But, you know, the thing is, um, it's just this guy, he took less money to go to Carolina, you know? And yeah. I think once you take less money and you start playing for X number of dollars, I think every team just thinks, okay, well, that's just where you're at, you know? Where in reality, well, he is. chose Carolina because they probably had a better chance to win. He could have gone back to Vegas, you know, before he went to Carolina for more money. And there were other options where he could have gotten more money. He took less money to go to Carolina. And sometimes, you know, you, you take that risk in terms of, hey, I'm going to take less money so I can go to a team where I have a chance to win. But then in reality, it maybe hurts you the following year because, hey, teams look at you like, well, now you're a million, million and a half dollar player. Yeah, okay, well, then make a million and a half. Go yeah, play pretty but I don't think good. It's about the, I don't think it's about the money for him, man, because and it, it wasn't, obviously. Play. That's why he went to Carolina. This guy's made so much money. Go play. Go but, play for minimum wage. Somewhere. But I think he's had some options. But I think at this stage, Cam, when you moved your family around a little bit, you got a young family, made a lot of money. I no, think no, you're no, very no. selective I get that. in terms of where you're willing to take your family next. Completely. And if one of those options That's don't come up, then you just, That's hey, what? pack it in and say, I had a great run. Yeah. And chill and do whatever mm-hmm. you want. And turn down job offers out the wazoo. But I will say this. Because you're going to get a ton of them. There was, um, oh, he'll work for a team if he wants to. Do whatever to. he wants. Super smart. Man. St- you hey, got the blood, baby. Let me give you, I'll give you a prediction here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and this is just my own prediction. I think Alexander Steen wants to be a GM. I think he is beginning that process of wanting to be a general manager. Like by now working for a team, you know, at a, at a, at a, at a, at a lower level, you know, kind of easing your way in. The old saying, you got to crawl before you can walk and all that stuff. So he's taking his time. But obviously, he can afford to do that. The guy has a shit ton of experience. So either a, a, a more of a GM than a coach? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'd rather be a GM than a coach, too. I, I, well, I figured, I think people like being a coach, too. Like, you're more hands-on yeah. with, like, it's the a lot players. Of, a, lot of, a lot of time and work, and it's just I different. Well, I, I think I think people like that. Being on the bench, they like to be the around. Competitive, yeah. And like I'm in practice, aspect. I'm like doing. The, yeah, I'm not just watching. You're a thousand yeah. percent right. Yeah, they some, want to be hands some people on would like that with the players. But all I'm saying is, Alexander Steen, if he wants to continue down that path and he wants to be a GM, I think one day, I think he could have that opportunity, and it wouldn't shock me if it was with the St. Louis Blues. You know, whenever Doug Armstrong, okay. or whoever is the next GM after Army, whatever, um, that opening would become available. I think. Alexander Steen will put himself in, in a position where he, he will be taken very serious. I mean, we got Gar Snow coming on right now, Cam, who, you know, he was never even working in management, went straight from being a player into being a GM. It's not like yeah. this has never happened. No, I know. Now, you play 20 years, you're a winner, you're a great leader, you're very smart and intelligent. I truly believe you can walk in. As long as you have the, the smart people around you to help you transition into that position, and to help you along, I, I think you, you could probably do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. Um, We've seen it happen. But it wouldn't shock me if a guy like, you know, Paul Stastny were to, you know, he and Steen are so close and such good friends. Maybe they're working together one day down the road. Yeah. Is what I'm I get saying. that. You know All what I mean? Good. It's not a hot take, but. No, it's like, not a hot take. I was going to say, because you said a hot take, and I'm like, no. Eh, not really. Like, everybody knows that. I know. Everybody would think Did that. Did I say hot take? Yeah, my prediction. G- uh, whatever. GM of the St. Louis Blues. Could be. Fuck, he played here a long time. Yeah. Knows the game. It's in his blood. Too. I'll also give Brandon uh, Hagel a shout-out from the Tampa Bay Lightning. I like him, man. I liked him in Chicago. He, he's got one year left on his deal, I believe. I think he's going to make just over $2 million this year. AAV, $1.5 million. I still don't understand why Chicago would, like, trade him. You know? I don't know. Like, when you're rebuilding, don't you want, like, a 20... He's 24 now, I think. Maybe 25. Why do you think? I don't know. They got a lot. I think they got a couple first round picks and stuff like that for him. So. Oh, okay. Well, then there you go. Yeah. You know. I wonder how the con dog's going to do, man. I saw a couple clips of him. What con dog? Connor Bedard. Oh. The con dog. Can you baby. believe that I, I saw like a, a honest discussion about whether or not he should be the captain of the Blackhawks? Oh, oh my, my God. That, that's, that's when you know stupid, there's nothing going on. Stupid thing to say. That's when you know that's there's nothing stupid, going on. Stupid thing to say. You're not going to get the Nicky boy. You're not going to get the Corey Perry. Are you out of yeah, here? He's on the NHL Network, too. Yeah. What? Yeah. 
Who's on NHL Network? It was. It's discussion. It Who, was with who? like barbe- <clears throat> Barbecue Bruce was talking about it. Get out of here, Bru- Barbecue Bruce. We love you, but <laughs> get know, on with yourself. I know. As a coach, you well, said he that? Well, he said, as I a don't, coach? I, he answered it like seriously. Well, I think you probably want to wait on that. I don't think you want to rush it. Like, no, the answer oh, is. He said, like, okay. Yeah, but, but the answer is, are you oh, hell fucking no. kidding me? He doesn't even know where to go. He doesn't even know how to get to the rink exactly. yet. Exactly. He's lucky he's not living with somebody. He's your yeah. captain? Now, I'm not saying he When did Crosby be, get it? 19? I think he got it at like 19. Because he didn't get it his first year. No, second year maybe. Second, you Mc- got to prove yourself at least a year if you're a straight up superstar. McDavid got it obviously very young. At 19. Has there been an 18 year old ever in the NHL history? Well, we got to double check how old Sydney was when he actually was. No, but I'm, okay. Has there been a guy their first year in the Probably NHL? Probably not. Hell, Andy. Hell no. Probably not. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I, mean, I'm, I mean, you go back to like. Give it to goalie. I really give it to the give goalie. Give it to the goalie. Give it to the goalie. Or don't give it friend. to anybody. No, man. You just signed. You can't give it, in my opinion, to like a Corey Perry or a Nick Felino or one of these guys that are on one-year deals. Huh? Seth Jones. Seth Jones. Oh, Seth Jones. Okay. I'm just Maybe. saying, like, you but, got guys. But I think. You shouldn't even have an A. No. You don't even know anybody. I think, though, the plan should be to give him the C if he. Proves it. If he, if he matches the hype that he's coming in with. Then, yeah, he's your next captain. It's not even about that. Mm-hmm. See, that's where all you guys are wrong. It's not about the hype. It's not about what he... It's about, are you a leader? I understand are you that. Le- Sidney Crosby's a leader. Mm-hmm. Like, he does both. But McDavid, same thing. He's you know, a leader, though. I, I he get is. It. Like, he could... But Connor, Connor Bedard could be a good player, but he might not be a leader. You don't know. Correct. We don't, we don't know. Like, God damn, that is ridiculous. But I'm just saying, it's just like a stupid conversation to even have. I couldn't yeah, even believe right. they, were, they, were, just, they were discussing it with Because what are you going to talk serious, about? serious... We should Tone. talk about tornadoes instead. But Brandon Hagel, AAV 6.5, Tampa Bay. You look at all the players Tampa Bay has under contract for the next three years now, man, including him, including Cooch, Vasilevsky. I mean, I can go on and on. There's a bunch of guys, man. I was Cernak? looking at I think Saranac. I think Sergachev. Like, they got a bunch of guys. They, dude. they, got lo- they, uh, they signed a lot of guys. They're not going anywhere. They're going to be good for a long time. They'll be time. good. You know? Good. I like when they're good. Mm-hmm. They're fun. Yeah. But he scored 30 goals last year. I think he was second in the NHL in takeaways, too, something like he that. He scored 30? Yeah. And he signed for what? 6.5. Okay. <clears throat> but he's been making 1.5. His, his AAV going into this season Damn. is 1.5 million. Interesting. It's, his cash, his salary is just over two. Yeah. But that's because he made 1 million in the first year of the deal. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, man. You got to lock some cats up that are going to do it for you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Got a lot. Yeah. You got to lock guys up. You got to lock some guy. I, I I want hockey to start. I just want it to start. But what I'm saying is, I want hockey he, to start. He, I'm sick of he, not watching. He, hockey. He's an example. Like when you compare it to Austin Matthews, yeah. If you're Austin, you're going to pay me thirteen point two. I'll take a four year deal on that. Yeah, man. But this guy's like a six and a half. Yeah, give me eight years. Give me fifty years. <laughs> Do this for a long time. Give me Bobby Bonilla shit. You know. I don't like contracts Power being Boston. maxed out at eight years. I think players should be able to get longer than that if they want. Fuck that, dude. But I hey, listen, you man. Put all these organizations in jams. But Andy, you compare, so like, they don't hire, so they don't have the money to hire other people like that work for the team. You compare the salaries though in, in the NHL compared to the other pro sports in relation yeah, to the yeah, revenue they different. bring in. Man, these dudes don't make that much fucking money in comparison to the other sports. R- they don't revenue wise. What other sport? Okay, wait, wait, wait. In comparison to the other okay, sports, let's think about that. Like NBA players, they make they bring in I so think much I more read money. Austin Matthews at thirteen million would be like. There's like a hundred more NBA players. There's in the five that guys makes. that make a lot of money on each team, and and and, and NBA, there's five guys. The NBA brings in but he so much even more. Crack like the top one hundred. Dude, the NBA make, brings in so much more revenue. Baseball brings in so much more revenue. Football brings in so much yeah. more revenue. Baseball plays and the football a lot of players, games. Yeah. The football players don't get like. There's so many guys, man. Like the big dogs. They're not all getting they paid. They ain't paid that much, and I they're know. they're fucking getting shit on the every day. The highest paid player, you know, you got guys making more than fifty million dollars a year. And, and listen, but they're quarterbacks. But you got these running backs who are fucking great, they man, and get they're not contracts. getting shit. They can't get contracts after when they're twenty five no. years old. No, and they're like, we're gonna strike. Hey, how about this? Find it. You're, you're you're irrelevant now. Mm-hmm. Everybody's passing the ball. Everybody could clog up, clog your ass up. Now you're blocking every There's time. There's a couple that are, you know. A couple, yeah. but they're all bitching. Yeah, well, Derrick Henry and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Okay, fine. But that 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 position is becoming irrelevant for the most part. It's not irrelevant, but no, I think but you just have to be a pack, pass-catching running back as well. you got to catch the ball because yeah. he's throwing it, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You can't touch a quarterback yeah. anymore. You still run the You ball. got more time. The best offenses still run the ball, too, you know. Oh, yeah, who? All of them. All the best offenses. They all run the ball? Sure. 
You gotta have a running game too, man. No, I know. You gotta switch you it gotta up. You gotta be able to set up the pass. Do I need to break shit down? I'll start oh, going X's and O's on you. Don't forget that I was a wide receiver. Why are the running backs bitching so much in that they're so relevant? Because they're not getting paid, man. They're not getting Well, why? Listen, if you're relevant. It's been several years, Cam. They're not drafted because nowadays, listen, you're not even drafted. Remember, running backs used to go in the top ten, top five all the time. There's a cat that the hardly Rams they drafted. hardly even go in the first round anymore, right? Or who, Gur- uh, Gurley? Gurley? Todd Gurley. But, he was you know, all pumped up. He did nothing. Oh, yeah. No, he did something for a couple of years and stuff like and that. And then nothing. Yeah, because they get hurt, dude. Well, then there you go. You know, the problem is you celebrate a running back because they rush for 2,000 yards, but then you're also like, well, you hit, you gave them the ball 300 times, so therefore, like, their body's breaking down. They're, I know. How long up. can you truly sustain that in, in the National so, Football but League? But you compared dude. it to the other big sports. And baseball, like, they play every fucking day. Like these, the revenue that comes in on a TV contracts and like at Bush Stadium, man. Like Bush Stadium has like ten thousand people there now because nobody's of Cardinal. there. Yeah, but they sold thirty two thousand tickets for every game in December. Mm-hmm. So now, if the Cardinals don't sign some big pitchers coming up, those people aren't going to renew their their season mm-hmm. tickets for the mm-hmm. year, and they're going to hit that. But this year, you might not see anybody there. But hey, they're all paid. Nothing for Nothing against the car. I, I don't know how any. Baseball. I I don't know how anybody would say I'm going to buy season tickets to baseball and like because literally they, they, literally no, go down there no, every I, night. I can't. I can't. And watch a baseball this game is every being, night when it's on television. You don't want to see it every night, but you you give tickets away and stuff like that. It's not necessarily every night, it's and you split tickets and stuff like and that. Stuff like yeah, that. yeah. But like, even if the Cardinals suck, when you go to a baseball game, you go there with your kids. You're walking around. You're high fiving people. You're having your beer. You're doing this. You're doing that. You know oh, what? Hat, what's the score? Oh. You don't even pay attention. Not even watch. Bush Stadium's beautiful. The wind's coming in. You see everything. A lot of baseball stadiums are all, too. Yeah, yeah, like Pirate Stadium, shit yeah. like that. It's fucking bad. Nice, man. So you go there for an event. Correct. When you go watch hockey, mm-hmm. you're you're out. you are. You're if the in. Blues are not playing well, you're like fuck this. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know what happens at the end of the game when yeah. they when they're yeah. terrible. Yeah. You know everything. Like you're watching the game. You're watching football games too. You're watching. Damn right you are, and you're betting on them. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. Yeah. You're betting. Yeah. On football, and, so and, you're and, committed. And, and basketball games you're watching. Yeah, you are. Well, I'm not, but you you are. If there's a if there's an NBA team here, I'd be watching that all mm-hmm. the time. Damn mm-hmm. right, I'd be so, supporting NBA. I'd be sitting courtside, high fiving these big soccer ass games too, like Messi. I haven't watched Messi. One, I haven't watched one St. Louis soccer game yet. I'm going Wednesday not night. One I'm going Wednesday. Are you? Mm-hmm. Messi's been kicking ass. The, you know, it's not the eighth best league. No, it's the sixteenth. Well, whatever. 21st, 16th, What do you mean, 18th, whatever? That's whatever. a big difference. They're just not in the top 15. Whatever number you want six, to... No, I heard they're up, 16th. Based on some people. Suge- you know, the, the, some people are saying they're not even in the top 20. Oh, oh, oh they could be you know worse. What I'm saying? No, I'm saying. Okay, so fine. It's like, whatever. I know. It's I, just not... It's Some are saying it's not in the top 10. So I, I don't know what number you want to assign to it. But, I mean, this guy's coming well, they, over and okay. just toying with the MLS. Oh, man. dude, Messi's... Dude, he's so cool, man. And, you ever notice Messi too? And I, I I I appreciate this so much. Messi not only does he engage with the fans he in, and he's normal. He includes his teammates. And too. when he takes pictures with people, mm-hmm. especially good looking women, which happens all the time, he loves his wife. You never hear any bullshit about him. Yeah. His kids. Yeah. He doesn't even put his arm around just like Keanu Reeves. Uh, uh, Keanu Reeves does. You don't put your arm around a hot Keanu chick. Reeves? Keanu Reeves. Keanu, sorry. Keanu. You're comparing him to Messi? No, because of the way they take pictures with women. He won't take it. Put his arm around nope. her. He'll sit there like this and smile. How do you do it? Well, I it depends because I, I don't want to be a dick because I'm not in that Are category. you putting your hand in their back pocket? No, or they bend over in front of me and ask me to sign a picture <laughs> on their back. And then their friends take a picture and they oh post it and then God. Kate gets fucking pissed. Oh, my God. Fuck that shit. I don't need... It's not fair to Kate. No, it's not. It's not fair to Kate no. to me hang out and I'm hugging you. I can't... You can't do yeah, that shit. No. You can't do that. It's not fair to her. That's you know? not fair at all. Not at all. You think I want Kate... Go hang out with a bunch of fucking dudes and take pictures. I'm with Kate. Like, if I was a dude and somebody's wife was there, and I'm like, look, we're here together. Like, I, I would never do that. No. <laughs> I just would never do that shit. So anyway, you know. Yeah. Imagine just going on Facebook, man, and you see your husband or your wife taking pictures with like, sexy-ass dudes and girls. Like, Damn. fuck that. Everybody's like, gee, Cam's having fun on this road. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's not fair. So I, like, I appreciate that stuff, man. He's monogamous. I don't know exactly, hey, but it seems like know, he, you don't know that. When you're a superstar like that, you kind of know a lot of things about the guys. Really? And if he doesn't you have, think you know if he's monogamous. You, but, Cam, Cam thinks he knows Messi. He's like, oh, I watched him on TV last night. I follow his Instagram. I didn't watch him. But the point is, when you're that big and you're around people that much and you don't have anything bad on you, 
you're doing pretty damn good. That's all I'm saying. When you're that big and there's women all over well, you, you and there's not what one, about LeBron? LeBron's done fucked up. What are you talking about? There's rumors of him banging fucking chicks what all the time. What about Michael Jordan? He's a fucking psycho dickhead gambling fucking woman. What are you talking about? He's got a terrible reputation. When he was playing. What else? Shaq? He was, you don't think he was smashing when women? He was, <laughs> you out of your mind? When, it, it, Shaq is awesome on Instagram. Love too. him, He's dude. got one of the best Instagrams. Like, I, I like how you're trying to... But Michael the, Jordan had a, was, was as clean as they come, dude, when he was a player. Outside of the gambling <laughs> shit. I mean, he, he was never involved. He, was he got dick, divorced dude. and stuff like that, but he was what? never up in any fucking like baby mama drama and shit like that. Okay. But there's drama with so many different people, and Messi just doesn't have it. So I appreciate that. So maybe I don't know everything about I, him. You may not. I, there no, may I, be, well, but it seems like he's monogamous, and I appreciate that. Hey, get that. some fact-checking on that one. See if he's ever been involved in any scandalous shit. Go ahead. Just like the other guy. How about Spain wins in the Women's World Cup? Mm-hmm. Oh, did they win the World Cup? Right, Spain. So they're celebrating. Mm-hmm. And the head honcho, like the CEO of the, of the organization, yeah. the best player on the Spain, Spanish team, after they just win the biggest fucking day of their life, he's like, ah, he's celebrating. He kisses a girl. He's making her out with her. No, no, no. He kissed her. Okay. And it blew up. And the the coaches ret- the coaches fucking resigned. Resigned. No, he over gets this? fired. And no one's even talking about their celebration. It's all about this peck on the lips. The that CEO. This guy, what is he? On what's his the lips? what's his title? And so they fired him. Megan Rapino comes out. Of course, you know, Captain America, Megan Rapino. Mm-hmm. When she's asked about what her favorite part of playing in the World Cup is, is the money, of course. Such a such is a Is that fucking, what she said? Fuck yeah. A loser. Anyway, but this guy pecks this girl on the lips and gets canned. And like you just celebra- like you just win the biggest trophy in your life, the best day of your life, and everything they're talking about is this guy kissing. So this they'll girl. cancel you in other countries too. I don't know if this the country canceled him. It was more like everybody jumping in and saying, "How dare you take advantage?" Who knows? Well, like the, these guys the, are committed. Of course, of course the country. I, it's the this the Spanish the Spanish Federation well, Soccer Federation. You could be from Timbuktu and you do something, and the people in Timbuktu don't care, mm-hmm. but everybody else on social media does. You're getting canceled. It has nothing to do with your country. Okay. It has to do with everything else on yeah. social media. So I don't know if this guy's in the wrong. I tried to watch a video of it. I can't really tell what's going on. It didn't show seem, me the video. I need to see what's well, going on. Why don't you on look at this. things once in a while? <laughs> and so this is a big deal. And so they, this guy, they, they create this team, and they win. They beat all these teams, and their biggest day of their life. And this guy just, like, is so emotional. It gives her a kiss on the cheek real quick, or uh, on the lips, which is, like, normal in Spain anyway. And, and everybody blows well, maybe up. Maybe it's not guy. normal. In Spain, I think it is. Not on the lips. Well, okay, Andy, whatever. But they do it on the cheek and stuff like I that. I just didn't think it was that big of a deal. I don't know, but you guys let us know. Okay. It just was a... If you're part of that whole thing, no one's even talking about you winning. You're talking about this guy kissing a... I don't know. Yeah. It's fucked Well, let's up. get to Snowy. All right, man. Garth Snow on this edition of the Cam Strict Podcast, fueled by First Form. Cam, got the Hell energy yeah. drinks going right now. I feel great. Do. Yeah, I, do I had a bar before the show today. Is that um, the only thing you ate today? So far, yeah. Yeah, I bet. It's like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> hey, man, they fill you up, man. They got a lot of protein. It's so a meal, re- it's a meal replacement. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Um, and we're working out with, uh, we're going to go to the headquarters tomorrow and do tomorrow, a little Tomorrow, looking forward to yeah, it. man. Damn right, baby. Hell yeah. I feel stronger. Feel stronger than I did last time, too. I bet you are. Probably you put know. a little more weight up there. Yeah. You're going to do the purple ones or the green You know, ones? I always decide, you know, listen, all y'all listen, whenever we go, I decide what kind of workout we do. Like, Nick always asks me, he said, what do you want to do, Strix? And I always say chest. Because you can't do any, you can't no, do anything. No, I always say so chest. So whatever the, like, it's chest like, it's like dealing with a child in the pool. So I haven't decided what kind of workout we're going to do tomorrow. I'm thinking cardio. Yeah, all right, let's do cardio. <laughs> It'd be awesome. I ain't doing that. You wouldn't do that? I, I don't, I, not, I, whatever he wants. To, like, I'll do no, anything I decide. They want to do, That's what I'm saying. You know? So I decided. So I'll talk to First Form Nick. We're probably going to put together a workout tonight. And, uh, yeah, cool. And we'll send it to you. Have a, Andy's going to give you workouts to do. He's going to send out like uh, emails to all the fans out there, let you know what his workout is. So you get on his schedule. I brought some... Um, Energy drinks, though, today, if you want one. I got a I got, I got blue one right raspberry. There. I got one right there, baby. Yeah, okay. All good. First Form, man. Check it out. Use our link, firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. More and more of you guys are doing it all the time, man. Appreciate it. I get those emails when they come in. I see your name. All y'all. Love it. Love seeing that. And appreciate all you guys for, for supporting us, man. They got everything. The apparel, the supplements, 
um, the uh, nutritional uh, uh, supplements they have, you know, for like gut health and, and heart and liver, all that stuff, yeah, man. Yeah, man, I'm taking a liver. They got everything. Women clothes, men's clothes. I got my dad this badass fall zip up kind of tight shirt looks awesome with a collar mm-hmm. I, I went over to his quarter house zip day. quarter zip looks fucking bitching dude because mm-hmm. he's going out he's hanging bitching. out with, he's hanging yeah he's hanging yeah. Out. i haven't heard that word in a while you know so he's hanging out with all his buddies now mm-hmm. and stuff a lot okay and like he doesn't have I, so i need to take care of him and, and first form's got fucking badass shit so he looks good man does he do any Some like workouts. clubs or anything like that like a fucking poker dumb. club or uh like a no man no he just he's gonna go down to lake the ozarks um with you guys during the no during the week with his buddy, my dad grew up down there. You know what I mean. So mm-hmm. like he'll go up there and hang and go, go cruise and do his thing. He looks good, dude. Yeah, he's working out every day. He's got the first form. Listen, shit going at, on. Well, you know I am see the uh, St. Louis Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame uh, Hall of Fame ceremony game. I, I, I tell you that this yeah, past did. weekend. I brought it so, up. So anyway, they had the, um, you know, all the Hall of Famers, like posters and stuff like that, and like pictures of of every player who's gone yeah. in. It's actually an incredible display of paraphernalia and, and memorabilia and all this type of shit. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. Yeah. But on Cam's picture, like all the uh, players who have been inducted in the past, like they they supply like pictures and stuff like that of yeah. their playing career. So everyone has like dozens of pictures of like them playing. Cam's pictures are him and Kate in a bikini and like with like no shirt on sitting by a pool, dude. Nobody else has any pictures like that, they dude. Don't, they don't I mean, I'm like, what is this? Like, where's the, they want pictures of you when you were playing, maybe like a photo of you in a fight or whatever. I Cam's got him there. and Kate, bikini, no shirt on by the pool. What'd your pictures look like? I haven't had one yet. No, I, no, I had, uh, I had hockey pictures. I just, I don't know. They sent, they sent me pictures of you. I'm like, okay, there you go. <laughs> I, I, just think it's hilarious. I thought it looked kind of cute, to be honest with you. It's just so funny. Every, everybody's got the pictures of their careers well, like and a, whatever. Cam's got me and Kate laying <laughs> by the pool, dude. No, that was at the lake, man. At I the had lake. a picture of the lake. I had a picture of just us doing shit throughout mm-hmm. our life. Mm-hmm. You know? Awesome. I think people do like that. To be no, I, I think so, too. And he's obsessed with hockey so much. Like, he did, Like if there's something that's not hockey related like he's like what, what's going on with this you know like whatever. it's just the like, only one the only you know, one that didn't I'm have different the, uh, than everybody else. the hockey pictures <laughs> i like to be different dude you, um you, see, i'm different than you you want to be like everybody else i want to be the opposite ooh, you know is that right kind of you flow in the wind which just whatever you, who's going this way i'm going you know it's all good man yeah. uh the illinois recovery center can man oh man we're gonna be going there in a couple weeks. Yes, we are. Uh, they got the gym set up now. We're gonna do, we should do a video there and mm-hmm. show everybody how nice it is. Now I don't know how that works because there's people in there now, so I don't know. Uh, well, I'm just legally, saying, I don't know if you can do. I that. don't know if you could do that. You're yeah. right. So I, if there's something that we could do to show you, yeah, um, what this place is all about. But we'll we'll, we'll, we'll do our best with that. Mm-hmm. And uh, but they're the real deal, man. I, I'm telling you guys. I posted something the other day on Instagram. They're there for you. They're gonna help you out. Those guys have been through hell. They've been through hell and back. They know what's going on. They know what's best for you. And um, it's an easy thing, man. Everybody knows somebody. Everybody knows multiple people. You can't let it wait. Oh, I should have done something. Just do it now. Try to. I know it's difficult, man. It's not easy to go tell somebody they need help. I'm telling you, it's not easy. But if you do convince them, this is the place to go. It is, yeah. truly. No, yeah. no, that's you a good way try. to put it, yeah. man. There's no doubt about that. It's the uh, new premier inpatient substance abuse facility. Uh, just outside of St. Louis, but you can be anywhere in the world, man. They got a bed waiting for you. Give them a call today, 888-743-0971. You can email them, info at IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. Hell yeah. 888-743-0971. If you or someone you know wants to learn about the Illinois Recovery Center, call that number. The Illinois Recovery Center delivers a comprehensive system of care that welcomes both the individual struggling as well as their family. Yeah. Yeah, and your family's affected. Like, you guys don't yeah. even realize, like, when you're an addict, you're selfish. You're the most selfish person on earth. Like, mm. you truly are. Everything that, everything that comes out of your mind, like what you're thinking of, what you're, what you're putting together upstairs, is all about you. Mm-hmm. And your family gets affected by that. So, you're really, you're, you're not affecting, you're affecting your family. You're affecting everybody around you. Right. You don't even realize it until you do. Yeah. Get help. Info at the Illinois Recovery Center. Yeah, baby. Get it done. Get it done. Start it over. Start it over. You're going to feel like a million bucks. 
info at IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. All right, test on roofing, baby. Hell yeah, man. You know why my house has been cool throughout the 100-degree weather? Did you get that? You get that good stuff, I boy? Got, I got that cool coat, baby. That cool coat, baby. Let's go. The Nano Shield Cool Roof Coat, man. You compare it to any other overlay, it's not even close, Kim. Hell no. No comparison. Hell no. We all know that, man. The Nano Shield. Ask about it right now. Testonroofing.com. It'll make your house like 30 degrees or more cooler than it would be if you didn't have that applied to your roof. 30? 30. Damn. I'm telling you, dude. And a lot of like Fortune 500 companies and That's businesses catastrophic. are using it. Just so you know. Yeah. 30 degrees? Mm-hmm. Because like... <laughs> Like, that's like uh, the Ice Age coming again. <laughs> oh, really? I think the temperature dropped only 15 degrees. 25 to 30 degrees in top floor temperature reduction. Well, hell yeah, then. Because my if you go upstairs in my Don't house, you ever try to, um, like, hey, well, quest, that, question my Well, that just shows you. That just shows you the real deal. It achieves up to 40% in HVAC reduction. Oh, hell yeah. Coating can be pigmented. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. Matches uh, reflectivity. Industry breakthrough. Thermal conductivity, Cam. I I wouldn't be able to even read this if I wasn't using my brain (laughs) app last night. No shit. Okay? Look, those are big words and stuff like that. It's going to cool your fucking house down. This is my vocabulary that I'm using. It's going to cool your house down, Mm -hmm. and it's going to save you money. And these these guys work their ass off, and they do a damn good job. And do you know that Nanotech is the only cool roof product on the market? Leveraging low thermal conductivity plus SRI to achieve more than 20 degree temperature difference from their competitors. So there is no other competitor. And again, I'm using big words, people. I understand that, but I. I, Andy's so smart. I've been doing a lot of brain activity the last couple of days. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of show your house. I wanted to show some of that off. Cool your house down and save some money. Um, Did you see that there's a real Seth? Did you see that? There's a guy named Seth who put an ad out. And everyone's sending it to me. All my people. I don't know about if your people are doing this or not, but all, all my, all my people. people are in Alberta, especially. We're like barbecuing steaks and showing pictures and stuff like that. So I don't know if you get any of that from the people in Alberta or not, Cam. But somebody mm. named Seth took out an ad in yeah. an Alberta newspaper for having a Sparks and doing sk- skate sharpening oh, at no. their house. Oh, really? Yes. That's a different Seth. You think? I hope so. But if he's got the skate sharpener there, or is it the... Is it Sparks? It's a Sparks. Well, then we're not chirping him. But I just wonder. Not every Seth is the same, Andy. But is he playing with people, though? If he's just kind of like. Like, if there's a murderer in the 70s business. named Andy something, well, am I going to be like, fucking Andy, here's a right. fucking Don't same. ever trust a guy named Andy. No, it could me, be a murderer. That's ludicrous. Right, so, right, right. No, this Seth is cool. Mm-hmm. But that motherfucker mm-hmm. at the hockey store. Oh, shit. That's got you. Wait. That's stealing panties Are you from here? your neighbor. Oh, my God. I'm really? Yes. You, you leave your fucking. No, seriously. Your daughter leaves her bathing suit out to get dry. Oh. He's stealing it. Oh, my He's God. He's a weird... Andy. What's he that's doing a, with it, dude? I, I don't it? even know. No, don't even no, answer that. That's question. what weirdos do. Okay. He's going to take your cat, too. Mm-hmm. You won't see Fluffy again. That's weird. He does experiments on that mm-hmm. thing in the basement. Oh, I'm not a cat person, But the parents though, don't so, know. You know. The parents are like, that's the, he's a good kid, okay? We, he's in his basement. How can he do any damage? Mm-hmm. No, he's... And then, he's killing and animals. He's, and he's working at the hockey and shop. And he's sharpening your skates. And he has no idea what His he's doing. parents say he's a good kid. He has no idea what he's doing. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Hey, the other yeah, day, being a murderer. The other day, a kid shows up to uh, the rink. They went to the hockey shop. Seth cuts the kid's stick down. And the parents don't even, like, check it out. The kid's not with him, whatever. He put, like, it gets it there. Dude, it was, like, two feet too small. Yeah, what a waste. <laughs> waste of money. He just wasted your he's whole, an idiot. your 200 hours. Because he's thinking about other things. I know. Nasty things. No, sometimes I think he does it on purpose, actually. Because he doesn't care about people. Okay, or that. You know, either That's way. That's why you get a Sparks and you use our delinquent. promo code Cam and Strick, and you're going to save more money than you'll save on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. That's how much money you save. It's the best investment you're going to make. Do not put your skates and your performance in the hands of Seth. Hell no. Nah. Take it upon yourself. Have your own skate sharpener inside your house, Cam. It truly simplify is Simplify your life, dude. If you're a hockey parent, mm-hmm. simplify your life. Because you know what? You getting your skate sharpening mm-hmm. done at your house mm-hmm. is going to directly affect your mood when you go to the rink. So now you're, now you're less likely to be a jack-off Ugh. and be loud and obnoxious mm-hmm. because you simplified your life being a hockey I dad sharpen my kids' mom. skates like every two skates now just because I can. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, they don't need every two skates. They don't need it, but 
I can because I have my own. Parts. I mean, Andy probably didn't need to skate a skate sharpen for fifteen fucking years because he doesn't use his edges. You know what I mean? Like Andy, de- like yeah. Andy doesn't even like you don't even need like when he Andy buys new skates like he doesn't even get them like cross grinded. He just goes out there. He didn't do anything. <laughs> You don't need oh, to do that every oh, fucking... But, but, but Seth will cross-grind him. Yeah, he'll, he'll do that for you. It won't matter for you. But, like, you don't need to do that every every other skate. That's ridiculous. But No, every two. I, I, I skate two or three off. times. You can clean them yeah, off. Yeah, I know. You know. But they step on stupid shit, too. Oh, Kids do. 100%. So I get man. that. You just got to check them. But the, if you do them too sharp, he's going to roll his ankles. So no, you got to know but, there's a balance. But it's not going to hurt to do it every two or three skates. It's not going to hurt it. Well, if they're too sharp, then it's hard for kids to fucking do stuff. So they You got to dig in, you know. Yeah, and he's like, it. I got to sharpen the skates. That's what's going on. I just love the sound. And he'll like overreact to things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> get a Sparks and get one today. Brody, can you give me a beer? Bellman and Bellman.com. Cam, at Bellman, you get no what? Swinging dicks. Swinging their dick around. They got the best customer you, service you'll find anywhere. They're located where? Try. Try Missouri. Yoink. Yoink. Um, Don't ruin that. <laughs> We got a good thing going with that. Hey, listen. If Bell- you do that, it ruins well, it. at Bellman and Troy. people are going to not like it anymore. You know what? They got Buick and GMC. Yeah. On one side of the street. On the other side, they have Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. There's something for everybody, Cam. Yeah, man. I got that badass Gladiator. Yeah, we We're heard cruising. about that, yeah. Well, I t- I'll tell you again about yeah. it. What yeah. do you got? <laughs> Want to brag about yours? You know? <laughs> Fucking Volvo. Racing series. Yeah, badass. Anybody can get a car from Bellman. That's the best part about it, no matter how bad your uh Credit score is, Cam, if you're in the dumps right now, you're having some issues. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Hey, you got a used car? You want to get it off your hands? I know who will buy it. Bellman will buy yeah, it. Yeah, they will. Say hi to Danny, boy. What up, Danny? And Kenny. Kenny. What up, Kenny? Got All the car. Bellmans, man. Yeah. Everybody, Dale, That's everybody, great. get out there to Troy, Missouri. Get out there today. Let's go, baby. And uh, get yourself a new ride in time for the fall, man, in time for hockey season. Uh, love our friends over there at Bellman. Um, also, have a lot of respect for Gar Snow, man. He was great on this great edition guy. of the Camister Podcast. Enjoy Snowy. Up Hell next yeah. on the Camister Podcast. Enjoy. The Camister Podcast is brought to you by First Form. Use our link, firstform.com slash Strick. They are the real deal. Get your protein, get your bars, get your apparel, get everything you need from the one and only First Form. Yeah. Firstform.com slash Strick. Now to the interview. Hey, hello. Garth. Garth. Yes, yes, Cam. <laughs> What's up, man? Andy. How What's we doing, go- guys? What's going We're good, on? Man. We're good. Where are you at? How much? You guys uh, based out of uh, St. Louis? Oh, yes, yeah. sir. 106 degrees out, Garth, and it's humid as shit. <laughs> it's nasty here. Don't you get that Midwest breeze? Oh, oh no. yeah. No, no, no. There's yeah. no breeze no, out there. You can kind of feel it. It's you can sticky feel as shit. It. Nasty. Listen, it is so bad here. Where are you at? Are you, are you in New York right now? Yeah, in Long Island. Nice, yeah. nice ocean breeze. Oh, yeah. No humidity. Oh, yeah. Are you on the water? You know, I remember like when Billy Garen was playing there, and like even Dougie, I think they were like live yeah. like the backyard had like you know it was like the ocean in the backyard. Yeah, I had a couple less commas at the uh, <laughs> end of my salary. I don't think I can get that close to the water. Although you were a GM for whatever 10, 11 years, yeah, whatever man. that was, that that pays pretty well, right? I mean, that, listen, what's harder, what's more stressful, being a GM or a player? Oh, I would say being a, a GM. Um, you know the. Uh, the running joke is the GMs don't have a uh, a union, so they're always the lowest paid. Ooh, yeah. not anymore though, Garth. <laughs> yeah. You'll find out because you're going to start getting uh, GM offers now, probably like yeah, through the roof after this conversation. Are you here. ready? And you you will know the the the, the going rate, right, the salaries for the GMs nowadays, yeah. man. That pays better than like a top nine forward. I'm I'm more concerned about the percent that you two are going to want. Now, is it five percent each or five percent total for your fee? Cam gets nothing. I get nothing. That's how it works. <laughs> so we'll t- I'll take I'll take four percent. I'll take four percent. Have your next deal. Cam you kidding kinda, me? Cam's kind of like the security guy or the bouncer at the front of the bar for you. That's exactly uh, that's what exactly it is. And right, he, listen, to be honest with you, Andy does need some protection in this town once in a while. And good thing he's got me by his side. So it's all good, man. All no good. doubt, man. No doubt. So, well, with you, with, is there a uh, gun restriction? Like, with Cam, with your guns. I remember you walking around before the game trying to intimidate our young guys on the island, and you would always kind of have that ripped-off, sleeveless, ratty old T-shirt. You're flexing. damn right. 
Yeah, damn right. I, I used to take it off in the penalty box in juniors, and they had to uh, no, tell me not to. <laughs> no, <I know. laughs> hey, so listen, like, first off, explain what's been going on. So you got let go by the Islanders several years ago, but have they been paying you all these years? Because, like, now that you're like a free agent, now yeah. you can talk. And this is the Garth we've been waiting for. So have you been getting paid all these years for not working? Because if that's the case, you got to let us know how to get that job. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> So I got let go five years ago. And, and one of the things when I was uh, uh, with uh, the Islanders, you know, we we were always kind of like a smaller market team. Uh, obviously, you know, we live in a, a community, uh, not really in the city, even though we are the New York Islanders. So we were we were losing significant amounts of money. So I, I took a lot of deferred comp uh, over the years just to ease in the burden for for uh, the owner at the time. Uh, you got the Bobby Bonilla deal. Oh, Look at yeah. you, you DPA Pro, that... Bobby Bonilla. Everyone in New York, man, that's that's those are the best Bobby contracts. Bonilla day. <laughs> no, but you know what? You have a you have a choice to either uh, you know take uh, deferred comp and and help out the the cause and the bigger picture, or you know just take your money up front. So I always uh, took deferred to ease the burden. Yeah. You know what? Playing for the Islanders, it's 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 kind of nice because. You could probably go around town and not really get noticed as much, but you you still have that like diehard crazy fan base. So it's kind of like best of both worlds, right? Very passionate fan base. Uh, you know, obviously, maybe not the volume of some of the other, you know, quote unquote bigger market teams, but uh, the community itself. And I didn't know much about uh, Long Island as a player. I started off uh, actually my first NHL game uh, was against the Islanders when I when I. Uh, was with Quebec Nordiques and then the Philadelphia, um, Vancouver, Pittsburgh. So you would always come to the Island. You'd stay at the uh, Marriott, yeah. walk across the parking lot to the beaten up Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And you really never had uh, an idea of, you know, the surrounding areas. And then when I signed here in 2001, I talked to uh, uh, Ted Drury, Chris Drury's uh, older brother. I played with him on the Olympic team in 94 and just to get some ideas on, on where to live. And uh, that was the first time I explored Long Island and realized it had so much more to offer than, you know, the Marriott and the uh, Coliseum and that little walk. So it's a great place to live, great place to raise a family. Um, and I've been here since 2001. Yeah, no, I love it, man. You haven't had to bounce around. But, like, hey, before we get into, like, everything you did on the island, whatever, as a manager. Like, your impressive playing career, man. Yeah, you played man. for a long time. Had great success at the college level, too, playing at Maine, playing on that great team with Korea and yeah. Jim Montgomery and those guys. Man, we know those guys really, really well, man. Fond memories, right, from that season back in 1993. That's, like, pretty historic stuff right there. Yeah, it was a, a really fun group to be a part of. Um, always said, you know, we, we practiced uh, – you know, the college schedule, you can you practice all week. You usually play Friday, Saturday night. But our practices were so competitive. And uh, I can remember Paul Korea telling the story when he went on his visits. Uh, he was playing in British Columbia Junior Hockey League, I believe, at the time. And he, he visited the top schools, you know, whether it was uh, Michigan, uh, uh, Boston University, Maine, uh, North Dakota, the five schools that he was allowed to, and, and he didn't uh, really need to go see a game. He, he just wanted to watch a couple of days of practice. So when he came, he, he watched practice, and, and his thought process was for him to become a better player. He wanted to go to the team that had the most competitive practices, high tempo, and uh, that's how he decided on, on Maine. Now, I don't want to speak football. I just I heard that uh, story, and, and it, it was a very true statement. You know, the competitiveness in practice, I can remember, you know, it was Mike Dunham and myself for the goalies, and, and uh, there was three always three statisticians up there for practice. So Sean Walsh used to keep save percentage uh, for the goalies on, uh, during the practice week. So it always kept you on your toes. And, and uh, you know, the practices, uh, the way uh, he integrated uh, statistics and, and, uh, you know, analytics before it was even a catchphrase uh, back then was uh, was something I think helped uh, drive the team to play at a higher level. 
What happened to Maine? You, you guys had like the goalie factory going there for a while. I mean, you just mentioned Mike Dunham, but then you had Jimmy Howard there. You had Ben Bishop there. I mean, you had like a long run of like great goaltenders, and it was such like an elite program. Like, I don't understand yeah. why, why why Maine isn't, you know, still a big dog in college hockey. Well, the, uh, the first part of that, the, in regards to the goaltending, you know, Grant Stanbrook was the assistant coach, but uh, he also had a, a history of working with the quality goaltenders. He worked with Mike Richter when he was with Wisconsin. So I think that's why you, you see uh, so many goalies uh, playing in the NHL coming out of Maine. At the time, was Grant Stanbrook was a, a great uh, hockey mind that uh, didn't just communicate and, and uh, connect with forwards or defensemen. He, he had a big connection to the, the goaltender position. So I would say, you know, Grant Stanbrook had a, a lot to do with the, the success of goaltenders coming out of Maine. Hey, listen, my son's going to skate with his, uh, with his son later on today. I mean, John Stanbrook's here in town, man. He's been a longtime skating coach here in St. Louis, man. So Yeah, I heard he's, he's one of the best at his craft when yeah. it comes to power skating and uh and doing that part of the game so they did save percentage in practice really be like before yeah. like the week before a game damn yeah that will no, keep you on your toes yeah no, every week it was uh statistics he knew uh you know how many uh shots on net uh, uh jim montgomery had he knew how many assists paul korea had in a certain practice he kept uh that's how you do it yeah and then wow. when he wanted to to play physical, especially if we were playing uh, BU, he would he would track uh, body checks. So he, he practice. Hit. You guys are hitting oh, yeah. in practice. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hardcore. How was Paul? Hey, so like I played with Paul in St. Louis. I just lovely human being. So nice to me. Didn't have to be, but he was. Was he crazy? And like in warm ups before we went out in the ice, like he'd have a whole separate bag of bands and equipment and it would take him at least an hour and a half just to get warmed up to put equipment on. Was he the same way in college? Uh, 100%. Yeah. He would, uh, I don't know if he was into the juggling. He, he, he was a, a great juggler. And that was one of the uh, aspects, you know, off the ice uh, type of uh, training that Grant Stanbrook would introduce to, to the players, uh, whether it's drug, juggling uh, against the wall uh, you know, just free juggling, things like that. But I, I can remember one time Paul was so uh, focused on his routine and, uh, you know, Mike Dunham would play Friday nights and I'd play Saturday nights and, and I would just go over and grab his, his game stick and I'd just start flexing it. And you could see the steam coming out of oh, his ears. God, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we just kind of mess with him a little bit that way. But he was, uh, you know, you knew he was going to be a special player. Uh, and obviously a first-class person. Hey, did you think Monty had coaching in his future? I mean, he's a guy who always liked to have a good time, man. People always like being around Monty, and, you know, obviously has kind of laid his roots down here in St. Louis as well, but, like, did you see that being part of his future? And, like, tell the people how good of a college player this guy was because he put up crazy numbers. Yeah, him as a – you knew he was going to be a a coach even when he was the captain, a player at Maine. You know, he, he would uh, he would handle situations, whether it was in the locker room that, uh, you know, really, I think that year, Sean Walsh had the easiest job. You know, he would just hand the locker room off to Jimmy and Jimmy would say what needed to be said, whether it was uh, holding someone accountable, whether it was uh, being positive. Um, in fact, I can remember in the uh, I think it was the national championship game. Um he, he called a, a timeout where I don't think Sean would have called it because he knew uh, in that situation players needed a rest, needed a regroup, and, and uh, you know, always uh, in a very positive manner took the bull by the horns and was not only an extension of the coaching staff, he, it was almost like he was the associate head coach. And, and uh, we all knew he would, he would uh, go on and, and coach – we didn't know he would have the success that he that he had, obviously, but uh, it's something we always knew uh, he had it in him. Hey, listen, man, you turned pro, and you had a lot of success, man. You played with a lot of Hall of Fame players. I mean, some of the biggest names in the history of the game. But I, I got to ask you, like, from a goaltending partner standpoint, like, were you easy to get along get along with for your partner? And did you pri- you know usually like like you know coexist with your partners pretty well? Like including Ron Hextall, like yeah. was he nice to you when you were a young kid getting into the league? 
Oh, yeah, Hexy was great. Uh, great teammate. Uh, you know, I can remember we were playing in the, uh, they had just built the, 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 the Core State Arena. I don't, is it Wach- Wachovia now? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was uh, probably 30 minutes before you go out for warm up. And, and uh, I had, I always say I came from the gym, but I probably came from the bathroom. And I was walking by uh, <laughs> his stall. And uh, he would always have his equipment, uh, much like uh, Paul Correa that you mentioned, in a certain way. And his pads would be standing up straight in front of him. And he was sitting there kind of in his uh, in his underwear. And he would sit there and, and rock back and forth like a, a crazed animal. And uh, I accidentally bumped his pads and they tipped over. And I, I, mean, I just started sweating right away. I'm fumbling, trying to get him back up. And he's just giving me the... Uh, the death stare and uh, the game's played. He gets a shutout, end up winning. Uh, two nights later, same thing, walking by and, you know, I just walked by and then he looks at me even a scarier look. And he's like, are you going to tip these fucking things over? You're trying to undermine me. So now I had to tip his pads over every, every time we, we played a game until he uh, went on a cold streak. Then I didn't have to tip him up, but he was great. Uh, just a really fun teammate to be around. Everyone sees this uh, kind of like a, a maniac, uh, but he was uh, a funny guy to be around, sarcastic, uh, really got along well with Ron. How, we always ask everybody, and we've had uh, the Big E on too on the podcast, but how, how was he? Was he quiet in the locker room? I mean, I, I've, obviously he was loud on the ice, but, but how was he as a teammate? Uh, you know what? He was obviously a, a very talented, the size of him at that time. You know, he had to be one of the bigger uh, players in the league and could skate like the wind, hit like a truck, a great shot. He was a, he was the total package. Uh, you know, unfortunately, injuries kind of sidetrack, uh, sidetracked his career. But that being said, he still had a very successful career. But, uh, you know, when, when you had that line of, uh, you know, Eric, uh, you know, John LeClaire, Renberg, uh, Renberg, they were so big and, and the ability to protect pucks and, and, uh, really just, uh, it was a total different element when they were on the ice, when it came to physically dominating a game. Listen, if you need a coach and like, I'm unavailable for you, Garth, you can't yeah. hire me or whatever. Like if you're trying to hire a head coach, would you hire Mike Keenan? Like, would you say, listen, this is the type of guy that I would let run my team after your experience with him when you're a player? Well, I can tell you one thing about Mike Keenan. You know, he, he was very demanding. Um, and if you went through the 20 guys in the locker room, you know, there was always, uh, you know, five that had a general disdain for him. Right. And I was very fortunate that he treated me well. He had traded for me uh, from uh, from Philadelphia to Vancouver in must have been 98. And, uh, you know, he gave me a a great opportunity. So I I understand where some people, uh, you know, may not uh, have very nice things to say about it. But to me, he was uh, always classy and treated me well. Um, You know, but I I think you can go through. uh, a long list of coaches that it would be the same uh, definition, so to speak. Everyone has so, a, everyone has a different opinion. Yeah. Man. No, we've had him on too. Oh yeah. But everyone has a passionate opinion. Some people absolutely hated him. Some people liked him. Yeah. I, I feel like a, a lot of the players and that goes with torts and uh, a bunch of other guys too. I feel like the players that we have on really like playing for some of these guys, but maybe the media and, and things like that kind of put a bad reputation on. Hey, but you did you play? And, and on that, I'll tell you what, one of the best coaches I ever played for was Bob Hartley. Oh, really? And, and it's the same. Uh, uh, if you ask the same question of the 20 guys, I think you're going to get the same answer. But Bob Hartley was one of the best coaches I ever had and treated me with respect. Uh, you know, and, you know, a lot of times uh, you're not always privy to uh, player coach meeting interactions. You always hear it secondhand, but, uh, you know, Bob was an excellent coach and, to me, I'm surprised he's not uh, in the league somewhere. Where'd you have Bob? I had him in the uh, AHL oh, for Quebec oh. places. 
Okay. Well, you're six foot three stopping the puck, so he liked you yeah. probably, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he didn't like me as much when I wasn't stopping the puck. <laughs> hey, how was uh, – Pavel Burry was my favorite player growing up. Like, I know what kind of player he was. I know what he did on the ice. But, like, how was he as a person, as a teammate, like, around that town, which he's in such a bubble? Like, t- tell me about Pavel. Yeah, I only had the luxury to play with him a couple of months because uh, I got traded there around the deadline from Philadelphia to Vancouver. And then I believe the next year he held out. Oh, yeah. And I think that's when the trade happened uh, with Florida for Jovanovski and and maybe a couple of the play. I think Gagne was part of that trade. Um, but you know what? Unbelievably uh, explosive player. Um I, the one thing I always remember about him, he could get dressed in two minutes flat. Like, you know, whether it's a game or a practice, you would look over his stall's empty. He hasn't even touched a piece of equipment from the, when the train is hung it up the, the day before. And and he comes and it's he, seconds. And a matter of seconds, that guy would get dressed up. But he, he uh, explosive player, um, fun to, as a goalie, when you get to practice on a every day-to-day basis, against a, a player like that i think it really helps uh helps your own game but uh you know when i i can remember going to pittsburgh and all the all the uh explosive players they had at the time i had a difficult time that year in pittsburgh with the practices with you know lemieux yager uh robert lang you know they had the uh just a, a whole lot of skilled players uh and it was uh, always a challenge in practice yeah, man. You played with Messier, too. Like, we yeah. had this conversation oh, the yeah. other day about, like, okay, you've got, like, your four big dogs. Everyone always says, you know, Gretzky or Lemieux um, and Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe, she's, Jesus. Yeah, my bad. Like, we're like, who, who's, like, the fifth best player of all time? You know, some people say Messier. Some people say... Uh, Yager. Yammer Yager, man. Like, like, a, like a young Yager. Like, you knew Mary Lemieux was, like, a generational talent, unbelievable player. You probably didn't need him to prove that to you, although you saw it firsthand, man. I want to get your take on it. But uh, a young Yamir Yager, like, were you blown away with his skill set, his size, like how he played the game? Like, what was your take on seeing him up close and personal? Yeah, just uh, I just remember tree trunks for legs, uh, a great lower uh, hockey body. And same thing, could protect the puck and just hold on to it. And uh, it was a, a very challenging uh very challenging, I think, for the opposing players to to strip the puck, to uh, try to get uh, possession of the puck whenever he had it, and he would just buy time with his cutbacks. And if he didn't uh, pick up any trailers, he would just uh, like a like a bowl, just take that puck to the net and and have an excellent scoring chance. So, yeah, just a very dynamic player. Did you like Messier though? I mean, we, we've had some people come on here and they they tell you you know what you think. They would say, like, an yeah, unbelievable leader and all this type of stuff. And we've had some players oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. where he, he wasn't, like, the, the cup of tea for them, you know. And we've had him on the podcast, man. He was awesome yeah, with, us. Great with us. But, like, for you I, as a goaltender, what kind of leader was he for you? I love Mess. I yeah. thought he was great. Um, he was uh, very selfless, always trying to help out uh, younger players, especially. Um, I had nothing about a great experience being bar- a teammate of Mark Messi. Okay, so listen, you're playing your goaltender. When do you, like, even, like, does being a GM ever even cross your mind? Are you ever even thinking about, like, hey, I'm going to be a general manager one day. I'm going to go work in a front office. Like, was that ever even, like, in your thought process? Well, when, when I walked on at Maine, uh, I ended up uh, redshirting one of the years, and uh, things weren't going well my first uh, two years. I was the third goalie, and, and, um, uh, I was fortunate that Matt Del Judas had uh, signed with the Boston Bruins. Uh, it must have been early September, and Sean Walsh didn't have an opportunity to go to recruit another goalie. So that was my first opportunity to to play. But I think being in the situation I was in the first two years, it really made me focus on my academics, and and uh, uh, I, it, it led me to. Uh, uh, get my bachelor's degree and then in my fifth year and went back a couple of May terms and a couple of summers and, and got my master's degree. My mindset at that point was I'm going to give this uh, professional hockey uh, a try 
And if uh, nothing materializes in three years, then I, I want to get into college coaching, uh, maybe uh, as an athletic director or, uh, you know, in some capacity with a, a professional team at the management level. So it goes back probably to college where I had uh, uh, the mindset that that would be my backup plan if, if being a player didn't materialize. All right. So give us the story. Like, how did it go down? Like, did, did Charles Wong just call you? Like, I think you still had, like, another con- year left on your contract or whatever as a player. He just called you and said, hey, listen, we got a GM opening. Neil Smith's gone. He was only here for, like, a month. So now we're looking for a GM. Do you want to be our next general manager? Like, how, how did it all play out? So we had the uh, 04, 05 lockout. And coming out of the lock- lockout, I, uh, I signed a three-year uh, contract with the Islanders. Played one year. And uh, Mike Milbury had stepped down during the season, was still handling the day-to-day duties of a general manager. And I had uh, met with Mike, uh, you know, over time when there was no, uh, there was no GM announcement. Uh, and at the time, Charles, I found out after the fact, was meeting with these uh, potential general managers, uh, but keeping it quiet which today with social media, good luck doing that. Right. And uh, the season ended. Uh, I asked Mike if I could get a, a meeting with Charles uh, about potentially uh, interviewing for the job. He facilitated that meeting and, and probably three interviews later uh, at the time I would use uh, my access to the NHL PA uh, statistics and, and, I got all my information to prepare for the interviews using that website, which was very helpful, whether it was uh, contract status, uh, you know, they didn't really have the uh, analytics in in the form that, that there is today. But I went through the interview process three times and uh, over the course of the, the, the spring. And when uh, he hired Neil Smith, I just thought, okay, I'm just going to rehab. I had uh, hip surgery uh, out in Vail, Colorado. So I was rehabbing training, uh, to get ready for the next season. And, and then I think it was 40 days after he had hired Neil, I got a call from, uh, Charles saying, you know what, this isn't working. I want to hire you. It was like, say a uh, Monday. He goes, I want you to come in. We'll do a press conference Wednesday. I'm going to go in Tuesday. I'm going to let Neil go and you're going to be the general manager. And that that was it. And when I talked to him after the fact, he said, I wanted to hire you in the beginning, but I just didn't want to take a bunch of grief in the media. And he goes, look at me. Now I'm taking twice as much. I, I fired the guy I hired 40 days later, and I'm still going to hire you. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, people think it was just like a snap judgment, but I went through the, the interview process uh, with Charles and, and uh, you know, really a, a, a great guy, special person who, uh, to uh, have the ability to learn from and, and, and work with. Wow. So that's interesting, yeah. man. So, but why, why did Neil Smith, like, listen, the story is that I, from what I understand is like, he was all pissed off because of the Rick DiPietro contract, like the 15 year contract. And I guess he expressed that to Charles and then that's what led to him being fired. Like, is that accurate? Like, like why did he leave after 45 days? Even though we had him on, yeah, I'm just that. trying to remember what yeah, the hell he's yeah. talking, what, what, you know, what it, he said, he, you know, would have to ask him. I, I was, I was up in Boston at my summer place when, when that, went down so i i won't i wouldn't be privy to that information it's just so crazy though yeah. i mean to have a gm just like all of a sudden just like leave a handful of days later like what was your reaction you knew ricky did you feel like right. that was like a a good investment where you're like okay this is kind of well, crazy uh, we'll just have to find our manager a way around it you know make it work well just from uh, being ricky's roommate on the road um you know, I knew that there was an offer on the table the year prior for 12 years at $4 million a year. And for whatever reason, it didn't uh, uh, materialize. And fast forward uh, a year later, it ended up being 15 years at four and a half, which was uh, not front loaded. It was four and a half straight. And at the time, I think it made Ricky the uh, seventh, seventh uh, give or take a slot, uh, highest paid goalie in the league. He, he goes to the All-Star game six months later, uh, gets injured, and that was uh, 
the uh, shootout contest when I think it was Gaboric went behind the net. Richie, uh, Ricky re- extended his leg and, and tore his hip and uh, and knee, and that was really the the kind of like the uh, downslide of, of of Rick with when it came to injuries. But when you look at that deal uh, at his age, uh, mid twenties, uh, it would have been a great deal if he stayed healthy. You know. Yeah. So it, it's not like he would have went from the seventh high, highest paid goalie of four and a half to, you know, the third. If anything, he was going to be down by 12 within a couple of years and playing at an all-star level. That would have been a great deal. Yeah. I mean, so, it's a first overall pick, man. Yeah. I mean, it's the best way to keep that cap number low at a time where the where the ceiling wasn't even what it is now. It just was so unheard of, you know. And they offered him 12, 12 years. He was he was like, no, I want twenty. <laughs> so let's meet in the middle. And yeah. they and they gave him fifteen. It was just such a unique contract, something that we really hadn't seen at the time, you know. So obviously, it got a lot of attention. At the time, you're you're correct, but as you saw, it became more and more prevalent yeah. in the league. The term contracts to bring the AAV down. Yeah. And uh, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, if he had stayed healthy, it would have been a, a great uh, contract. We were fortunate enough at the time that, uh, you know, we, he was an insured player. So it really didn't affect the, uh, you know, the salary structure of the team. And mm-hmm. and if you wanted to go above and beyond, you could always do LTI. So it never really hurt the team in that regard. It just, uh, you know, obviously cost, cost money. The weird thing about your story is not the, not the contract. It's like we had Ricky on, by the way, and he's awesome. But he's about to sign this huge deal. You've been in the game a long time, and you guys are fucking roommates still. <laughs> and you have to share a room in the NHL pre yeah. two thousand what is it four lockout or whatever it was. No, two thousand twelve lockout. They changed that. That was yeah. so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, yeah. Once that, uh, I always call it the Bob Bugner rule when he was on the uh, what was it the executive committee or whatever it was for the PA. Yeah. I know that was. One big thing, he always wanted uh, players to have their own room. Making eight million bucks. Hey, so room. what was the biggest adjustment for you? Like, were you really ready for it? I mean, I, I know, like, you interviewed and, like, you know, you had interest in it. And Mike Milbury, I, I'd like to get your take on him, too, man. But you talk about a lightning rod. But, like, when you stepped into the job and you're looking in the mirror and you're like, holy shit, like, were you truly ready? Like, who did you have around you that was kind of helping you along as you were kind of, like, being, like, groomed into to running an NHL club? Yeah, I would say I was more prepared uh, when it came to professional scouting because I knew the league, mm-hmm. whether I was playing or, or watching from the bench, I had a, uh, a bird's eye view when it came to knowing the, the National Hockey League. So in that regard, I thought it was a, a big plus for me. Uh, another plus was at the time, you know, I'd been to training camp. I knew uh, the prospects. I knew what was in the pipeline, whether it was a, a player that may have returned to junior or, or there was a European team. I, I knew those players from spending a week of training camp or to the end of training camp when they got sent back. Uh, that was positive. The, you know, the, the, I guess the biggest challenge for me, it went from, and, and I say this not in a, a negative way, but as a, as a player, you're selfishly just worried about yourself and what you need to do to make sure your own game is prepared. And then when you become a, a manager, now you're worried about your 25 players in the national hockey league, your 25 players in the AHL, your prospects, whether in uh, college, junior Europe, um, you know, your, your, your staff, your scouts, your, you know, it just becomes uh, from only worried about one person. Now you're worried about 200 people. And, you know, if uh, one of your players, uh, uh, parents has uh, an accident or, or something uh, occurs, uh, it becomes something that you have to uh, address and it, and it's on your, on your desk. So, you know, whether it's a family member, whether it's a, a wife, a kids, you know, so that, uh, that number climbs. So now you, you know, you have the responsibility of maybe 400 people now, 500 people. So it becomes, uh, I think a situation where you become a lot more uh, selfless than, than uh, as a player where you, 
and I don't say it in a negative way, you're selfish and only worrying about how you need to prepare your own body and your own mind. Millberry, Millberry, a good guy? I got along with Mike. I got along with Mike. And, you know, if you got uh, in, a, in a situation with him where it was, uh, he was in a good mood, uh, you would laugh your ass off at some of the stuff that would come out of his mouth. And uh, I, I always liked uh, or enjoyed my time with Mike. Yeah, for sure. Hey, man, was, was, was New York truly ever in danger of relocating? Like, as far as you know, like, Kansas City was, like, being talked about. It was hot and heavy and obviously not too far away from here. So, like, you know, I was even talking to some of the people that were really pushing in the Kansas City area to bring the Islanders there. Like, was, was it ever, ever truly a possibility for that team to leave Long Island? Absolutely. Absolutely. We, in fact, played a preseason game in Kansas City. I think it was against the Kings. I remember that. I don't know if it was one or two off seasons. Uh, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm not in uh, the meetings at the highest level, but uh, it was definitely uh, uh, something that was on the radar. If uh, First of all, we didn't get to Barclays Center, and that was a great placeholder for us until uh, a new arena could be could be built so it was definitely uh, something that was uh, in in the forecast all right so listen the john Tavares situation i mean everyone's talked about that and i mean you've come out the last couple of days you've made some comments like you know hey like some of that was taken out of your hands so are you saying like you wanted to move them or were you like okay no i don't want to move them because you guys are telling me that you're going to be able to sign them like like in hindsight what the right move would have been to move him, right? If he's not going to resign there, then you got to move him. You got to get something for him. And I know, I know he's been treated like shit and stuff like that since you know his first couple times coming back there, fans going crazy oh, and whatnot. You know, but you look at the contract he signed in Toronto. Like, is that a contract you would you would want on your roster too? Like, given his age and where he's at right now as a player, I'm just curious how you look at the you know the the, the situation with Tavares. You know, the big picture all all around. Well, I. I when John came back and, and played, uh, I think it was at the Coliseum. It might have been at Barclays at the time. And the, uh, you know, the reception that he got or lack thereof, you know, it just, it, it really wasn't anything he did wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, the decision was made not to move him and to wait it out to free agency. So it, there was no decision for him to make. He never uh, communicated to, to me. Uh, that he was uh, looking to go somewhere else or he never communicated, oh, I'm definitely staying. So a lot of the, uh, you know, the scuttlebutt I hear isn't true. So, you know, in, in, in that regard, it's a little upsetting on, on, for John because John's such a classy person and, and uh, he, would never, he would never bring it up. But uh, he didn't do anything wrong is what my message was to the, the Islander fans and, you know, you talked about it earlier, what a passionate fan base it is. Sometimes you, you can't really talk sense uh, in that regard. But from being on the inside, John handled everything with class while I was there. So I don't know what happened after the fact because uh, I got let go in the shortly after the season uh, to, to free agency. So I, I can't really speak on, on, on those uh, interactions with John. I was out of the loop. But, uh, you know, he never said, stated he was going to stay. He never stated that he wanted to leave, and the decision to uh, not move him wasn't made by him. Okay, so what was your recommendation to the ownership? I mean, were, were you like, hey, listen, if, he, if he's not telling us he's going to stay, like, we ha we've got to move him, like, because we can get a lot in return to set ourselves up moving forward into the future. Like, what were you, what was your recommendation to well, ownership? Yeah, so where were we in the standards? If you could refresh, if, if you're a couple of points out and your team has traction, it's a different situation than if you're 12 points out. But, right. you know, the decision was made that he wasn't going to be moved. Mm -hmm. By ownership, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, it's just such a – I mean, a lot of teams have been in that situation. You know, you just – Big time. There's so much you can get in return, you know. Like, I mean, because people – you look at some of the money that he was talking about getting. Like, at, at that time, did you look at him as a guy that was – a $12 million player, like, hey, absolutely, he's worth the money to invest that level of commitment. 
Yeah, I would have to uh, go back to my notes. I know we made an offer during the season, whether it was uh, 10 or 10 and a half million a year times eight. Uh, but I don't have my my notes are in a box somewhere. See, my feeling would have been like, hey, listen, if you're not taking this, like you just we, you got to know. Right. Like like if you if you're in that situation again, Garth. Would you handle it any differently? Like, how do you look at those situations in general? Star players, yeah. they're not committing. You get to the deadline, it's like, shit, man. We're, we're taking, like, a giant risk if you choose to walk. So, what are you saying? Just uh, as a general manager, just make the transaction? Well, I'm saying, like, the- I'm saying, like, if you're in that situation again, like, would you, would you do it all over again? Or would you handle it, like, differently? Would you be, you know, more concerned about getting assets in return than taking on the risk of having him walk and getting nothing in return. And he's not the last player to do that. There's been a lot of other, and I get it, man. He's the captain of the team. He's yep. a star player. Yep. It's not like it's that easy of a decision just to like trade the guys. So I'm not saying like what you guys did was wrong. I'm just curious how you look yeah. at it. If you were in that situation again. Well, I would hope that the decision process wasn't taken out of uh, the general manager's hand, hands, you know? Right. So like I said, in, I think it was in September, maybe late August, the decision to to hold on to him and not entertain the idea of, of moving him. And I can remember getting calls from other teams, and I said, yeah, we're not moving him. Yeah. I was we're gonna, not moving him. I was so, going to ask you that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> teams calling left and right, you know, being like, hey, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll take we, we'd like to talk to you about, like, you know, I'm sure they were, man. But, you know, listen, ownership, this At is – At that point, it's a good point, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they, they kind of, like – and that's why they're the owners, right? I mean, <laughs> <No shit. laughs> they make the they make the decision, but everyone always points the finger at the general manager. So sometimes, it's not it's not fair to do so, man. But like seeing we him, c- that, that's why the GMs get the big bucks. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But it's it's always interesting how it how it goes down. Did you think he like at the time? Did you think he was like? What was your opinion? Like, did you feel like he was going to stay or that he was going to walk? Did you have an opinion either way? Like knowing the kid? Uh, I know he was uh, torn. And like I said, I don't know what uh, transpired after I got let go. But, uh, you know, I don't know whether it was 50-50. I don't know if it's fair to put a percentage on it. But, uh, you know, I know he loved playing in Long Island. He loved his teammates. Um, You know, he... uh, you know, it was a tough decision for him. And, and really that's a, a compliment to the Islanders organization. It's a compliment to the fan base that, uh, you know, it wasn't an easy decision for him to make. Mm-hmm. You look at the roster now though, man, and they've had a lot of success and you, you've got your handprints like all over it, you know, yeah. and you yeah, made you some do. great draft picks, man, late in the draft. Like, you look back at some of these guys, whether it's Devin Tays or Anders Lee or somebody. Like, is there any one of them that you said, I know this guy is going to be a damn good player? Yeah. Or or are you completely shocked that these guys have developed into the, you know, level of players that they are today? Well, I mean, it's it's a lot easier when you have the number one pick like we have with John Tavares. Yeah. Right? Um, to say that, uh, you know, whether it's a Devin Tays, I think we picked him up in the fourth round or yeah. – Adam Pellick, who was, I think, a third rounder, to to say that these guys are going to be turned into the players that they ultimately turned into, you know, we would have used first round picks on them. Mm-hmm. So, I don't think there's anyone in the in the uh, in the industry that can have that kind of accuracy. But uh, when I first got there, we had a we ended up uh, turning over the staff. The great thing about having you know, the, the rink net, uh, we used rink net at the time, the databases, you know, you get reports uh, from scouts from seven years prior. So, you know, the, as, if you look at it kind of like a teacher, there's your report card. So in the first uh, couple of years there, we made some drastic changes to our uh, analytics and scouting staff that uh, really, I think at the time, if you look at, I started, I think, 2008 to 2017. I think we were at top five for uh, players that were selected in games played, points scored, uh, points per game. So I thought uh, our, our drafts were, were really successful in that regard. And at the time, 
I, I know for a fact that we were doing things uh, in analytics that uh, that weren't done before. And, you know, we, uh, we really had thought in 2008 and 2009, when we were kind of going through our rebuild, um, had a lot of players that were major com- contributors and, and are still on the team now, even into their 30s. Yeah. You got Sorokin too, man. Yeah, dude. Listen, <laughs> it should be the, the 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 New York snows, man. I mean, you got, you got you're all all over it right now. But Barzal, you get him in the in the middle of the first round. Obviously, you get uh, you know Bolivia. You moved you know a, a, a high draft pick in, in order to get an extra pick there. So you guys were creative there. Well, Anders Lee though. Like, wasn't there some talk about him playing football or something like Tree that? Tree trunks. Isn't that why, like, maybe he slipped? Because I think everyone knew he was a good player. Did you ever see him play football? Like, was he that good of a player, yeah. like that level of a prospect? I can tell you what. I've seen him uh, before games. And, you know, there's the uh, the guys who warm up playing soccer. And then there's the guys that have maybe a baseball glove and baseball and they're playing catch. And then there's always the fo- football being thrown around. And I was walking – through the uh, underbelly of the arena and Anders threw a ball and it must've been like 10 feet from me. And I could hear that thing whizzing by. Really? So he was a legit football player. Never watched him live. Did see some video of him, Uh, but he was eligible in the 2008 draft. Uh, And we were uh, having conversations about selecting him and uh, couldn't get a uh, confirmation that he was just going to focus on, on hockey. And the following year, we drafted him uh, in the, I don't know if it was the sixth round or fifth round, late, late round pick uh, when we got uh, uh, an indication that he was going to focus on hockey and go to Notre Dame. Let me, Garth, though, I'll tell you, man, uh, playing for the Devils, I know we played you guys like 50 times in preseason. And that drive over from Jersey, knowing that I got to deal with some cats meaning Trevor Gillies, Karkner, a couple other guys. Like, th- that was a tough, long hour ride over. Like, tell me about my buddy Trevor Gillies. He probably should have played in the 80s. He might have been a little bit too too late in his era. But that guy, man, tougher than shit, and he's a great guy, too. Tell me, tell me about him. Well, I, we, I had to get those guys because of you. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. My yeah. head still hurts. We got, we got sick of you running roughshod on all our young guys. So. <laughs> God, he yeah. was tough, man. Yeah, what a great guy, too, yeah. Trevor Gillies. I know he got a lot of grief. We had a game against the Penguins years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. And uh, it looked like he was, uh, I think Tan Grady was the guy he kind of knocked out. And he was got escorted off the ice in the corner of the Coliseum where the Islanders would walk in and out <laughs> to the ice. And he, it looked bad on TV where he was pointing and yelling. Uh, uh, but he was actually yelling at the trainer because the trainer was uh, trash talking him. So I found out after the fact, you know, when it's live, you're like, oh, Trevor, get out of there, get out of there. And then you find out that it was the trainer he was yelling at, not the injured player. But first class person, um, you know, just uh, loved by his teammates. Uh, can't say enough good things about him. Had the last and name. Tough, tough as nails. Tougher than shit. Lefty. Fu Manchu. You know, <laughs> like he just... He just was hard to deal with, man. Great dude. I had to give him a shout out. You know what? It's funny. I've run into him once every couple of years and uh, nothing but a big hug. He's a big teddy bear. Yeah, he, is. Yeah, he is. I know, man. Hey, Dougie, wait. Like, you hired him, man. You brought him on board. I used to tell him that he had the, the best title in hockey, like assistant to the GM and the assistant coach. So, like, nothing's ever his fault. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like he's the assistant coach. So you can't blame him. And he's not the GM. He's just assistant to the GM. That was so odd, man, to, or assistant to the owner, whatever it was. It was something crazy. Yeah, like, I think at the time he was assistant coach, assistant GM, and I might have thrown player development. Like, we had to get a 8 by 10 business card for him to fit all his titles. <laughs> I mean, who creates these titles over there? Like, I've never even heard of that, having an assistant coach having more power than the head coach. He's like an assistant GM. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but as you, with Dougie, great hockey mind, very passionate about the game. Uh, and landlord, I think uh, John Tavares and Matt Molson were living in his guest house for three years as well. Yeah. So... He, whenever you get a, a, a player of his significance and he decides to uh, stay in Long Island and, and wants to be part of uh, the organization, you're going to do everything you can to keep him. And uh, you know what? He did do 
a little bit of all those uh, titles ever on his business cards. So, you know, it wasn't like uh, now where a coach uh, will hang around for a week or two after the season, then kind of goes away. He was right there with me and, in the off season when it was time to build for for the future as well yeah no he, he and he loves the game man he's so passionate about the game and he's got a great feel for the game but did you know that like when he first took over as head coach on an interim basis the team got hot like almost like like went on like a crazy run and then uh ended up getting the full-time head coaching job did you feel like he had it in him to be like a long-term head coach i mean we'll see if he gets back in it now like he's working with with uh, San Jose doing some player development stuff, I think. So we'll see if he ever wants to be a head coach again, man. But it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time oh, yeah. when you're a head coach, you know, especially when you made yeah. 100 million bucks. And I, and I think uh, as a head coach, you're almost like a, a general manager in your own uh, little bubble where you have to manage a staff. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously the players are the most important aspect of a, a team and then managing every individual, you know. So it is a, a, a very time-consuming position uh, as a head coach uh, but he when he came in I think it was almost halfway through the season the run that he went on was pretty impressive uh, as a head coach so you know great relationship with the players uh, and uh, a sound hockey mind would you want to be a head coach uh, no no, no. <laughs> maybe a, lot, a maybe of a youth hockey it's team a Garth you can be a head I, uh, yeah. coach my my boys teams which uh you know, one's a 14U and the other one's an 18U. So I get my fill on coaching the last few years uh, doing that with my boys. Yeah. And I, I can remember one time I called up uh, Jack Capuano. I said, hey, I apologize for all those rants you used to you used to give me in my office about players. I, go, I just caught myself doing it. <laughs> yeah, I know that's what happens. Yeah. Hey, tell me about that Josh Hosang. Like, because I remember, mm-hmm. like, the reports on him coming into the draft, like they, they all, you know, they weren't always positive. Like, like what, what sold you guys on taking him? And was he, was that a risk? Like what, what was your relationship like with that kid? We, uh, we took him, I think it was 28th late in the first round. He had top five talent mm-hmm. and uh, it was more of a home, home run swing. That didn't pan out. So it's not a situation where if it was a, uh, you know, a top, 10 pick, we would have selected him. It was, I think we traded uh, early in the second round, a few slots just to, just to take a flyer on him. But uh, the talent was there. We were aware of all the uh, off ice issues. And, you know, sometimes uh, we think we're smarter than we are and we can correct behaviors. And obviously we were wrong, but like I said, it was a, a home run swing that wasn't a top 10 pick. Uh, you know, I just thought it was worth the risk at the time. Hey, man, and sometimes you do that. That's what yeah, happens right. when you're drafting 18-year-old kids. Yep. These aren't 25-year-old finished products. Yep, yep. But when did you know? Did you know right away, like, or pretty soon after you drafted him, that, like, okay, this probably oh, wasn't the best decision? I knew day one at training camp when he showed up late, and I made him run every stair in the Coliseum oh. and sent the back to the junior team. That pisses me off. Oh, my Showing God. up fucking late. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, there's no excuse for that, no, man. No, no, man. And then he wore number 66. Who was behind oh. that? Remember everyone's giving him shit because he's wearing 66? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's you your... know what? I, I, I never even really – I always knew 99, but I never really gave it much thought. You know, a lot of these uh, kids coming in that aren't going to make the team, they get the high numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, something probably we should have changed uh, a couple of years later when he came out of junior and turned pro. What was your number, Garth? 30? What was your number? Uh, uh, depends on where I played. I took whatever they gave me. <laughs> Make sure no one wears that number either, man. Make sure no yeah. one. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, so what do you got going on now? Like, what are you, what are you hoping to, yeah. to do here moving forward, man? Would you love to get back with a team? Like, you taking it slow? Or, or, and, and, has, and has it been hard for you, man, to kind of sit on the outside on the sidelines having to be out of your control? Like, could, couldn't you have gone and worked for a team and having an offset? Or, or did, you, did you have to wait for your contract to expire before you can go work again? Well, I would have had to get permission from the team and there would have been an offset. Um, my kids at their age, now they're 18, 16, 14, 12. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wanted to take some time away uh, with the family. I coach, uh, you know, two, two of my uh, two teams with three of my boys, uh, 14U, 18U. I do some other things uh, on the side, uh, 
business wide that keeps me active, and then I stay current with the 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 NHL. So for me, what I I would love to get back into the game if it was a, a right situation, um, but uh, I'm also enjoying time away uh, and being with the the family at their ages. You know, so I'm having fun. What else do you like to do? You got a boat? Are you a golfer? Are you a hiker? I, hunter? <laughs> Well, if you've seen my body, you know I'm not a hiker, and I'm <laughs> I'm only a golfer when it's uh, carts are allowed on the course. Oh so. God, yeah, dude. <laughs> I think I'm taking uh, your your buddy on this afternoon, Dougie, at our club. Get oh, a big nice. Match. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Take some money from Dougie. He's been like in Tanzania on like a safari or something. This guy. Oh, crazy! <laughs> what a what a vacation that would be. <laughs> Was he killing I, lions? I would, I think my wife would probably push me off the side when the lions came by the truck. <laughs> Knock you out of the there truck. Go. Oh, my yeah. God. Go pet him, Garth. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's nice. He's a nice lion. Yeah. It's a kitty. Yeah. Um, hey. As she's rubbing a T-bone around my, my shoulders. Oh, my oh, God. Shit. She put steaks in your shoes. Uh, <laughs> hey, what's what are you most proud of, though, man? You did some great things there. I I, listen, drafting is not an exact science. I can, I can look at any GM's track record. I can find some shitty picks. Yep. I can find some great picks. But you made some great trades, too. Like, do you think a the, the the quality GMs have that ability? Like, like the, the trading for players and trading for that. You made some great trades. Do you think that is more difficult than the drafting process? Like, I mean, explain like having like the balls I, to be I, able to make a trade. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the most important uh, aspect of of those couple topics you you just mentioned was the the drafting, yeah, uh, and developing because you know the trades. They don't materialize as much as, uh, you know, the fans may want or, or we may want, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, I think probably the the proudest thing I am is, uh, oh, God, there's, there's a bunch, so many positives. Our, our draft record was, uh, I thought, uh, really uh, a positive uh, experience for, for our team. I thought... Uh, uh, the way we built our analytics uh, department, I think, was ahead of its time. And and even now, you ask what I've been doing the last five years. I've been meeting with different uh, analytics people to even fine tune that more, uh, not only at the pro level but uh, in the draft process. So, to give you a little insight, the the one of the reasons why I think we were so successful is we incorporated a uh, personality test with every, any player was draft eligible and uh we just made sure our scouts administered uh, the test and then we had uh, a couple of different uh, formulas we would use to project 18 year old players so mm. that was cool we'll define that like what do you mean a personality test like explain that it's about a 45 minute uh test that uh, you would take in a controlled situation uh being our scout would administer it and uh I'm trying not to reveal too many state secrets because it's something that I think is a, yeah. all good. All yeah. good. A, a positive for any scouting department. But we would utilize the results of that test, whether, for instance, uh, it's a driven player, more of a passive uh, personality, whether it's uh, an introvert, whether he's an extrovert. Uh, just we would use uh, a lot of these trigger points to – come to a conclusion that the player was going to have success guys let's cross so, let's cross him off he likes yeah, vanilla ice yeah, cream yeah. and not and uh, not butter pecan yeah. pretty much pretty <laughs> much okay. that tells you things though man hey you said earlier in our conversation and by the way i still yeah. don't think any teams uh doing what we did at the uh when it comes to the amateur i know scouting. so listen so like you said earlier in our conversation that you were head of the game analytics wise and then now every team has an analytics yeah. department. Like, what were you doing, you think, that may be a little more mainstream today that, that we, you guys we were ahead of? We would set table and predict what player a certain team, and I'm not going to say names of teams, that mm -hmm. we felt were using analytics, maybe not to the extent that we were. And we would, you know, we would have little uh, uh, side bets on who that team was going to select based on knowing that they were putting their toes into analytics and it was pretty accurate. Wow. Interesting. Any analytic that, that you look at that you just kind of push to the side and said, eh, we're not into that. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I think there's a, there's a lot of, and, and I'll give you, I'll give you a, a situation. When, when I was at Maine, Sean Walsh, legendary college coach, before the, the word uh, analytics came out, it was always a, a checklist of, I think it was 12 things, whether it was um, not plus minus, but plus minus when it comes to scoring chances. So Paul Correa, we'd play a game against uh, Northeastern, and if he was responsible for, say, 18 scoring chances for but on the flip side, he was responsible for uh, five scoring chances. He turned the puck over. He was in the wrong position. You know, and he had five against. He would be a plus 13. Mm -hmm. So it w wasn't just plus minus, you know, like we know it. It was plus minus based on each shift and each play within a shift. So that was pretty cool. Now that's the analytics before analytics was that's in early nineties. So I think a lot of it stems from, from that, you know, you can utilize and We did it here on the Island. I'll give you another example. We would use uh, sticks and Greg Cronin, who's the coach now in Anaheim, excellent yeah. coach. Yeah. He's a big at Northeastern, right? Yeah. At, at Northeastern. And then uh, he was assistant in uh, Toronto with the Islanders and then was the AHL head coach in Bridgeport in, uh, in Colorado as well. But he, uh, he was adamant that he wanted, uh, you know, sticks to be uh, uh, part of the uh, checklist that we would develop. And when I say sticks, it's like, if you're closing cam on a player sticks in the air, you finish your check fine and dandy. But if you have your stick on the ice, you know, it, the puck hits your stick, breaks up uh, the pass a little, then you finish your check. That would be like a plus. You know what I mean? So you yeah, can break stick on puck. In. Exactly. And it's funny. And, and when I coach, uh, you know, especially my 18 year olds, I just use those same, uh, you know, checklist items that we used and you develop new ones based on your personnel. Um, you know, and, and really as a general manager, you're always, Sometimes you feel like Mills Lane, you know, between your your scouting staff and your analytics department or your head coach, your coaching staff and the analytics department because, you know, it can turn into a fist fight. Like, oh, yeah. Break it up. Got to break it up. Well, yeah. the, the synergy that we had in our organization when I was there, uh, I thought was excellent when it came to, you know, incorporating analytics to the scouting and analytics to the to the coaching. It was fun. Yeah, man. I was going to ask you if you, if you do that with the kids and, and all that, man. So we're and and some people listen. The, the old school guys, yeah. they have a more difficult time to adjust to the new way of thinking, and uh, and and that can be a challenge, though. But I mean, I think I saw a comment from Kyle Oposo a while ago, you know, who said like even when you were playing, you were kind of like doing numbers and doing stuff like kind of in the back of the bus and stuff. So. You've always played around with that type of stuff, it sounds like, right? I mean, it's always kind of like been something that you've done naturally. Yeah, and, I, and you know what? I, I think earlier you asked, the, you know, how was the transition of being a, a general manager from a player? I was very fortunate to have a, a very strong staff around me mm -hmm. uh, when it came to that adjustment from player to, to manager. You know, Joanne Holloway, uh, you know, she's – pretty much runs the operation in the office. Um, she had been the Bill Torrey hire. Uh, Kenny Morrow, who's from Missouri. Oh, yeah. Probably see him in the rinks. Uh, great hockey mind. Very helpful in that transition to me, for me. So I was very fortunate to have great people around me. Oh, yeah. Kenny Morrow is a great guy, man. I mean, it would have been easier if, the, if, if they had the Kansas City Islanders, man, right in his backyard, oh. you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but he's an Islander legend, man. So, listen. You're it, the man, I Garth. appreciate it, Garth, man. Thanks for coming on with us. Hey, where'd your name come from, by the way? Garth. Is that, is that oh, like your oh. granddaddy's name or something? Uh, you know what? I got the short end of the stick. It was four boys, one girl in my family. And it was uh, Greg, Gary, Glenn, and... Uh, I ran out of G's. It was either Garth or Grant. Ooh. Well, Grant's a good name, too. And Garth, uh, Garth's a hell of a name. It's, it's like, like different. A, I think of Wayne's World, you know? You got the most unique name in hockey, man. You kind of do. <laughs> yeah. the, the, whenever uh, I'm uh, ch checking in somewhere or picking up uh, 
something and they ask your name, we Garth, and they're like, what? I go, Garth Brooks, but not him. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Garth hey, listen, Brooks. have fun with Dougie. So tell him we say hello, yeah, too, man. Say what's up. Good and, luck. And all the best with yes. you um, and whatever the future holds for you, man. I know if you want to get back in, you're going to have that opportunity. Oh, yeah. So your best of luck with that. Oh, thanks, guys. And I'll send that four. Was it 4% you said? Just, uh, 5%. Just I'm to me. One. Just to me. <laughs> All right, Andy, Cam, thanks. thanks See you, big dog. Me. We'll okay. see you. All right, Garth. Take care, man. See you, buddy. The Camister Podcast is brought to you by Bellman and Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get out there to Detroit, Missouri. Check it out on one side. You got the Buick, the GMC. Options for everybody. Then right across the street, you got the Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Again, find something that works for you. And get yourself a new set of wheels in time for the summer. Yeah. All right, that was Garth Snow, Kim. Garthy boy, Garth. Remember, I asked him about his name. He's like, uh, I got uh, my brother's names, Greg, Greg, and all a bunch of G's. G's. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Garth Garth Snow is a unique hockey name. It is, man. Like, totally. I think it's a great name. He's got that Boston accent, or that New England accent. Yeah, you know what is. I mean? Yeah. yeah. He's up in Long Island doing his thing, dude. Chilling. Somebody was telling me he didn't talk about it on the podcast, but I had a, a former player tell me the other day that they 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 think he like owns the rink where he's coaches out Maybe. of or something. Maybe, you know, he's just man. He's doing his thing, dude. Doing his thing. Played a long time. Yeah, you know, he had a very lot. Smart guy. He had a lot of fights. You know that? Yeah. We I didn't talk someone. about him. Yeah, I know. But he got into a lot of fights. Yeah. Like he kind of like loses temper. You know, had a short. Well, fuse. he hung out with um, Ronnie Hextall for a bit. You ever get punched in the face by a blocker? Yeah. Yeah. You're, hey, you're, you're, yeah, yeah, Andy. <laughs> you, you ever fight a goalie? Yeah, I have Ray Emery Juniors. Did you? Yep. Like full on, like yeah. square off? Uh, no, you don't square off with goalies usually. See, like this is where Andrew like, Peters you, squared you off. You could watch every like something. He squared off. Know. He squared that off. That was a brawl, dude. That was a brawl. I'm not talking like That's when you're in a scrum. Beat up Ray I'm not da-da-da. saying you're in a scr- oh, no. scrum with like five or six people and you just grab them from behind and like. No, we just bu- we bumped and we went and I. Punch and he punched me, and I punched his mask off. And it was did he drop ring. his glove? Yeah, he did. Of course, yeah. So, so it was like a that, fight, like a is, real fight. Yeah, Andy. Like when you punch people in the face, want me to explain it to you? <laughs> My God, do you ever say to yourself, "God, I'd love to get in a fight today"? You miss fighting? No, 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 I don't. Fighting's scary, man. It aged me. It aged really? My parents, it aged Kate. Yeah, it's not. It's not fun. Like I loved it. At the Would time. Kate tell you not to fight? Fuck no. Andy, no. Well, Fuck you said it aged her. No, but she gets nervous. I'm going to get fucking knocked out. Well, that's why I vegetable. asked you. Did she ever ask you not to fight? No. It's business. Did your parents ask you not to fight? Fuck no. It's business. They never said, I'm concerned about you fighting. You think my parents fighting. are going to tell me what to do on the fucking ice? And that you can't do that? Are you out of your fucking I mind? I don't know. It's my fucking job. Don't do your job, Andy. Andy, how about your mom and dad tell you not to ask questions to people? Like, like, give me an what example. What would you do give in me an life example what they would say. if you couldn't ask questions? Give me an example what they would say. What would you say. do in life? Give me an example of what they would say to me. Andy, listen, I'm worried about you. Stop asking people questions when you interview them. <laughs> Is that what you're going to And you're like, okay, what are you going to do? I just can't. What are you going to do? I, you're going to tell a story I about yourself? I can't listen to them. Like, I, here's my story. I, I came home and the, the garbage pail was tipped over. I don't know what to do there. And this, and my neighbor was cooking curry. What are you going to do if you can't ask questions? You can talk about yourself. Who's cooking you curry? About Who's Cod cooking curry again? Well, I'd probably talk about Tahoe or Tahoe. Co- Colorado. I went to Tahoe and I had this guy drive us around. Well, we got chased by a bear. So, oh yeah, the stump. <laughs> oh no, it was a real bear. Oh yeah, I ask, got you. You ask, rustle it. Ask Ty. I mean, come on. Ask Ty and Ivy, dude. They'll tell you. Did my parents tell me not to fight? How stupid would that be? They tell me not to fight at the bar. <laughs> you know, like. I don't want you fighting. No, I gotta, I gotta do what the fuck I gotta do in that moment. Mm-hmm. Don't tell me that. And you know who else I hated when they told me not to? It's coaches too. Just, if it happens, I'm gonna have to yeah, go. Yeah, but coaches would tell you that. They would here and there, but sometimes you're forced into it. Yeah, but sometimes it's not the best and situation I, in the game to do it. Thank you. And I played that right. Yeah. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't have played as long as I. Did. I always said that about Ryan Reeves too. He doesn't hurt you because he doesn't take bad penalties. No, I know. Well, that's why he's still in the league. You can't take dumb penalties. And people are like, Kim, I can't believe you, you don't have more penalties. I'm like, I didn't take dumb penalties. Yeah, I didn't I'm trip surprised. anybody. 
I didn't trip anybody. I just had hitting penalties and fighting majors, and that's it. Yeah, I would have thought you'd be. No ten minutes. I would have thought you'd be over like a thousand minutes in penalties. No, because I didn't take stupid penalties. Well, you got to get some tens in there, dude. I didn't because I don't chirp the refs. I kiss the refs' ass. I was friends with all of them. The lineys were fucking cool as shit. They're all like. Yeah, but if you just grab somebody up. late in the game, and they'll just give you a ten and kick you out. But I have to have a reason to grab somebody. You can't just grab people, Andy. You're fucking clueless on Well, shit. Matthew Kachuk, who we're going to have in here. Hey, who we talk about with uh, a few uh, episodes ago from the Panthers, our boy, D-Man? Brandon oh, Montour. Yeah. What about him? They're all getting tens all the time. Good for them. What does that mean? Sam Bennett, Matthew. I'm going to get a 10-minute misconduct? Yes. Well, I'm saying if you would have gotten a bunch of tens. Then what? What changes? Maybe you'd have about 900 minutes. What changes? Penalties. Do I get a bonus? Maybe. Do people think I'm tougher because I got a 10-minute misconduct? Like know. Brian McGratton used to do in 2004. Lockout what do you mean? Year. What would he do? We were going toe-to-toe with fighting majors and penalty minutes throughout that year. And he kept getting tens at the end. And he knows it. He won't admit it. Mm-hmm. He kept getting tens at the end of games because he was be like, fuck you. Fuck you. And then they give him a 10 minutes contract. So he got 24 minutes of penalties. Meanwhile, I got seven. So it added up, added up. And he got like 551. Mm-hmm. And I had like 350. Oh, really? Yeah. So he had more penalty minutes than yeah. you? Yeah, because the 10 minute misconducts. You get a ton of those at the end of games. Yeah, I know. And I didn't like do. I don't like chirping refs, and, man. And a lot I of guys get them, and they're not really even tough guys. They just Did you get ten. Yeah, and and and, and the referees, I think, hand them out a little too easy nowadays too. They just start handing out tens. If it's yeah, at the end it, of the game, they just want you off the ice yeah, and out of it there. It makes it man. easier for them for sure. And sometimes that's fair, and sometimes it's like no, man. Yeah, but I mean, even if there's like thirty five seconds left in the game, you can give him a penalty. He's not coming back into get the him game. Out. Just get yeah, him out. Anyway. Get him out. Yeah, I know. I get. Oh, well, they score. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you don't want to get you know a if they power score. play. Yeah. You know, if you get a penalty and they score, you come out of the box. Yeah, you know that, right? That's true. I mean, you know that, right? I've heard that. Yeah. You watch hockey, don't yeah, you? I think I've heard that before. Is that how it works? I think so. Um, oh, no, you played. <laughs> <laughs> Top 10 scoring. In what? Mid-States. Oh, fuck yeah, you were. 10 people playing that tournament. <laughs> tournament? Whatever, Mid-States. Can I convince you to coach? High school can I Can I convince you to get, get into coaching? No. I'll come out and hang out with the kids. No, that don't, that's not what we need. Well, I don't want it then. I'm going to convince Why you. Why would I want to coach? Give me one season. And deal with your fucking drama. Give me one season. You guys are fucking psychos. I don't want anything to do with that drama bullshit. Give me one season. I don't want anything to do with it. Stressful you fucking shit. You don't have much drama at the young age. I don't. Oh, yeah. You guys are nuts. I'm not dealing with any of that crap. You want me to come out for some practices? Yeah, man, I'll help the kids out and stuff like that and be fun and pump their tires up and motivate them and teach them to be tough and mentally tough and shit like that. Damn right I will. You want me to come out there for every fucking practice and be part of that group? No way. Mm. Okay. No way. And travel with you guys? Fuck that. Oh, that'd be fun. All right, so again, we thank uh, Gar Snow for joining us. We've got some good ones coming up, though, Cam. Damn right we do. We got a lot. We got always got a lot. And training camp will be here before you know it. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm sick of not watching hockey, man. Like, let's go. I didn't like your attitude in the intro today. Why? Well, you were just a little combative. Um, About what? And just because my brain is elevated because of my the way I've been thinking today, it's just I think it's. Was I wrong on fact checking? Was there some probably like what? Well, I don't know. The the people let me know. Okay. Okay. The people. The people let me know. You were wrong on the uh, ankle bracelet, that's Not for really. sure. really. I was and right been, on like 90% well, of you've it. you've been wrong on... Uh, I, bro- I broke the ankle bracelet down. You were wrong on uh, Thailand with the drug laws. You've Dude, been wrong go about do drugs in Thailand and tell me what how everything goes. <laughs> like, seriously, go do drugs there and then tell in me. Le- in front of, right in front of yeah, the cops. Yeah, in front of everybody. Like, look, I'm smoking. I wouldn't do that. No, I, I was telling you, dude. It's scary there. Don't be stupid. What's the scariest... And what, the what's the scariest boys? country? Right now... Mm-hmm. The scariest country for the United States? No, just to go and visit and oh, Jesus. commit a crime. Probably in South America. Singapore? No, Singapore. People go to Singapore, Singapore all the very, time. Dude, there you got yeah, but if a you, lot of things going. No, there's always no nasty areas everywhere. Shit. I would say, I would say the nastiest country would be somewhere in the hardcore cartel, drug lord part of South America. Venezuela? Venezuela ain't good. I would they say, kidnap you, you know that. Yeah, I know. Sex trafficking out and the then, wazoo. And then you can get out. If you pay them off, I would they'll let say, you off. Thank you, Andy. I would say in the middle of Africa, big wars going on in the middle of Africa. You don't want to touch that. Which which part? Congo. To all that, dude. 
I would also say some Middle Eastern countries that where if you want to bring your wife and you make out with her, you you might get stoned. Syria, to death. Syria ain't good. Afghanistan ain't good. Things like that. Um, but yeah, there's some bad, a lot of bad countries, man. Tons, man. Tons. Like tons. they'll literally just like they will. They will actually. I shouldn't say literally because that means you don't have a good back vocabulary, according to my brain don't coach. Don't overthink it, dude. According to my brain coach, but. They will arrest you in certain places for doing nothing. No, I know. For being an American. Well, yeah. Damn right they will. And they'll come get you. I know. I know. They'll, 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 uh, they'll get money for you. But since you, you know only I mean? go to Big Cedar Lodge, you're probably going to well, be Well, because safe. I don't need to show <laughs> off to anybody and brag about where I go. I like to go where I like to go, and no one bugs me, and I do my thing, and it's relaxing. And it's beautiful there, It's actually. beautiful. It's gorgeous. We may join you, actually. When, you, when, you, when, you, when are you going? We might join you. I'd have you and Lori come down. Yeah, I know. And stay and right the, next to us. And the kids. Fuck no. Why? You ain't coming on my boat. Well, I'm the kids smoking. kids can come on the boat. I'm partying, and I ain't doing it in front of them. I'm not going to be... I can't be myself if the little kids are running around. Just for like an hour, and then, no, you know... No, it's not how it works. I'm not going to hang out with... That's, you have your own boat. You hire your own driver. I'm going to be separated so I can do my own thing. I'm not going to, like... I can't do that. You got to watch out for those police. No, the no, boat I, police can. Of course. Water Charlie's always out there. You always got to watch out. Water you, Charlie? You, yeah. Okay. You, you be careful. Don't be stupid. Mm -hmm. And you'll be okay. okay. There's no one out there. I'm going in October. It's the best. No one. I don't see anybody. My That's favorite what, month. Andy likes to be around everybody and say, look, I'm with this guy. I'm going to post something. I don't do that. I do my thing that relaxes me and Kate and we chill. Mm -hmm. I don't need to show off to anybody. I don't need to do any of that stuff. No. You know? No. I don't go to uh, the clubhouse in St. Albans, which is 10 times nicer and than the Creve Court Country Club or whatever the fuck you're at. <laughs> and then I brag about, where are you guys going? We're going to Ibiza. I have to go to Ibiza. <laughs> we have to go. We have to keep up. I don't do that. Well, we I don't, got my we jam. Don't do that yeah, you do. We pick exactly where we go. exactly where you do. That's exactly. You get swayed just like you throw a leaf in the fucking air on a windy day. Where's the wind blowing? We have to do it. Well, Matthew That's Kachuk uh, is very familiar with um, Cape Cod, by the way. Just, you know, so. And we'll have him on soon. You'll be hearing about that conversation. And I know that you, like, your trips aren't that cool. Is when you brag about a certain trip for fucking eight weeks in a row. Weeks. And there's nothing cool that came out of your mouth. <laughs> Not one thing. Then you're bragging about it like you're fucking building houses and fucking... Dude, Egypt. my brother was just fishing in Homer, Alaska with grizzlies 40 yards away. That's kind of cool. Like, no, I'll, I'll show a you a story. video. I dude. believe that. Like, that's a different story. You're hanging in Cape Cod and Touristville going and eating fucking clam chowder, and you're like, we're doing things. And we're like, everybody's like, I don't give a fuck. I will know? say the uh, lobster roll cam is the most uh, so overrated. Oh, really? Yeah, I just rather eat for lobster for like thirty bucks for a no, second. Well, it's not even that don't good. go to an expensive place. You it get lobster fucking roll in Maine for a lot cheaper. It wasn't that good. I'm trying to find this video. I can show you how close. The, no, uh, it's all good, Andy. You don't have to show how me. close I the believe uh, grizzlies were. We don't. You know, I don't have to waste any more time. We've been doing this for two and a half hours now. They were very, very close. You don't have. To, you don't have to show me the the audience. Don't <laughs> don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck, dude. Um, the Camistry Podcast, though, is brought to you by First Form. It's actually fueled by First Form. We'll be going there tomorrow. Looking forward to it. I yeah. haven't put together our workout yet, but well, good. Um, thinking maybe we'll do. A they're little... gonna be they're gonna be distraught that you didn't give them a workout plan because they don't know who first form. They're gonna be like Andy. We don't know how to work out. Tell you don't us. know. You haven't noticed how it works when we go there. How they ask me, "What do you want to do today?" Because when you're a child and you can't lift the weights that me and Big Boy Nick do, mm -hmm. you we have to cater to you because you're a child. So therefore, Nick has to do extra work to cater to you. We have to get different weights out for Take you. Take it back. No, I'm not. Take what back? Take it back. No, it's true. You talk. You, you, Andy walks around. We're doing things like me and Nick are working out. Andy's just like walking around doing. Just walk around then. Don't even work out. Good God. I was working out last night. No, you time. weren't. I actually you hurt my shoulder. Remember, I tore my shoulder. Of course, because that's what like you're a half child, half woman that doesn't work out. Well, no, whatever. Okay, no, that is. That no, well, no. you can't say that in today's. A woman day that age. doesn't work out. That's you're half and half. <laughs> what you are. It's not good. Half child. Half child, half woman. <laughs> Jesus. All right.
First Forum and firstforum.com. Use our link and only our link, Cam. Firstforum.com slash Cam and Strip. Damn right. It helps us. Damn right. So when you go there, you use our link, right? No, no just use our link. It helps us out, guys. You know how that goes. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strip. Got to keep this thing rolling, baby. Let's keep it go. rolling, keep baby. Keep it rolling. Let's keep go. Keep it rolling. Uh, Tess on Roofing and Tess on Roofing.com. Big dicks right there, baby. Oh, my God. The big boys. I'd put him on my line. God damn right. I might just hire him to like be with me. Okay, Brett. It's Shit like character. a security. I mean, they just have a security guy with me He runs me at a all tight times. ship over there, baby. Yeah, He'll he get does. shit done, dude. Yeah, he does. Damn right. Shit kicker. Shit kicker. And uh, power forward, too, man. I put him on my line for oh, sure, yeah. like you said. Damn right. Um, get that cool coat, man. Put it on top of your roof. It'll make your uh, home 30 degrees cooler on the top floor, Cam. <sighs> that helps big time. So when it's hot out, make sure you have it. Listen, they've been doing this and applying this in a number of Fortune 500 companies, too. So Hell check yeah. out. Tess, Tess on, on roofing, roofing baby. Let's go. Love having them on board with us here on the Camastrick Podcast. The Illinois Recovery Center, Cam. 888-743-0971. 888-743-0971. They have a bed waiting for you. You want to talk to uh, Eric or to Chrissy? Listen, we can get you in touch with them if you want to ask them specific questions. But they are here for you and here to help you. God dang right, man. They're the real deal. And you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. So many people, man. Yeah. Get it going now. Illinois Get Recovery it going Center. Now. They will help you. Yeah. Info at Illinois Recovery Center if you want to email Eric or Chrissy. But message me or message Cam if you want to get in touch with them personally, if you have questions. Uh, you can always call up there as well, like I said, 888-743-0971. Um, Sparks, baby. I, I, this, explain why you should get a Sparks. What's the most important reason? Well, I, if your kid can't turn, he could be Connor McDavid. He's not going to do a goddamn thing on the ice. Or if he's got a bad edge, yeah. And then he's got to lead the ice and go get some fuck boy to fucking sharpen his skates in the middle of the game. That, yeah. that takes 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then he fucks it up because he cross-grinds them. Now you're really fucked. Mm -hmm. What's the point of that? No point. Just get it done at the house, and you're set to you're set to go, and it relaxes you, and it makes your life simpler. That's mm -hmm. all. It does relax. No big you. deal. I just enjoy going down there. Every two or three skates, I like to just go down there and sharpen cam. Yeah, you don't uh, have to do every two or well, three. Well, I'm just saying that's what I do. Okay. Oh, well, you're so hard on your skates. <laughs> promo code is what? Cam and Strick. Cam and Strick, babe. Of course, it use is. that promo code. You'll save more money yeah, than right. you save on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Get that Sparks and get it today. Find out why more than uh, 25 teams in the NHL are using a Sparks machine. Hell yeah. The Blues even have one inside their As they should. practice facility. Yes. Over 25 teams in the NHL using a Sparks. Bellman and Bellman.com. Cam, go to Bellman. They may give you sushi and flavored water. That's the kind of personal treatment you get, customer service you get from Bellman. Where are they located? Troy, Missouri. And you get no what? Swinging dicks, dude. Say hi to Danny, boy. Danny, what up, homie? And uh, Kenny? Kenny. What'd it do? And Dale? Fucking Dale. Goddamn, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Buick GMC on one side. On the other side, it's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. They've got something for absolutely everybody. Plus, if you have a used car, they want to take it off your hands. They will buy it from you and give you even above Kelly Blue Book, man. Oh, hell yeah, man. They take care of you. They do it right. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. At the one and only Bellman Automotive in Troy. All right, this has been the Cam and Strick Podcast with Garth Snow, baby. Love all you guys. Love Appreciate you Appreciate Garth for giving us the time, and hopefully he finds his way back into the National Hockey League, if that's what he wants. Did a lot of good things with the Islanders, Cam. Yeah, he did. Drafted well. Uh, found a lot of gems late in the draft, you know. So a big shout-out to Garth Snow for giving us some time. Hope you enjoyed it. Follow us on all the social media channels, Instagram, Love Facebook, you guys. Twitter, everywhere. And uh, thanks for all the support on the Cam and Strick Podcast, baby.